GNCC on Racer TV returns this weekend, and it is Johnny Girard sitting atop the point standings. But in four rounds of racing, we've seen three different winners. Girard obviously winning the first two. Josh Toth from the XC2, a historic day taking a win there. And Dante Oliveira taking the win in round number four and then saying peace out. I'll see you guys later this season. But the man we talked about, Girard, he's at the top. Baylor, four rounds of racing, no wins under his belt yet does that change here today ashburn there's no place like home in tennessee can he come out and get a win here today all that and more starts right here right now on racertv.com Good afternoon and welcome to round number five of the 2024 Progressive Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialize, your AMA National Championship. We're here in Monterey, Tennessee, a new facility for this, the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires Old Gray GNCC. And we welcome, as always, Johnny Gallagher. Hey, Johnny, we've had a couple of weeks off here uh, coming off a, a big win by Dante Oliveira. And then he says, see ya, I'm out. Yeah, visiting rider from the West Coast doing five rounds, filling in for the injured Ben Kelly. Uh, and what a way to make a statement in, in just a short-term appearance here with a win. Uh, I mean, obviously, a rider with world-class pedigree has done incredibly well in ISDE. Uh, Multi-time champion yeah. on the other coast in multiple different series. Uh, but, yeah, man, he gets it done and, and absolutely just uh, a... a kind of a, a flawless performance yeah. start to finish got up front right off the start and then continued to just battle his way there with wheel to wheel with johnny gerard the entire time and getting the job done yeah that was it and it, we we joke about it during the broadcast if there's anybody you want to be uh in the pro class it's the guy you're under the same tent as that would be johnny gerard but johnny uh gerard is doing just fine he has got a big points gap right now he's inching closer toward what would be a full race in points ahead of the rest of the pack what do these guys got to do to get up there and get in the fight with Gerard? I think to me so far, Johnny Gerard has been the biggest surprise of 2024. Uh, his speed has not surprised me. His fitness has not surprised me. His racecraft and his consistency yeah. has just been shocking. I mean, this is a rider we would see with just a lot of ups and downs throughout the season. Obviously had that XC2 championship, but coming to XC1, it's just an all different ball game. And this year he's proving he's got his ducks in a row. He's yeah. got his mind where it needs to be. And like you said, I mean, he's just consistently clicking off. Uh, race win after race win, and even with not getting the win, still kind of max points because yeah. the guy that beat him and took points from him isn't in the championship hunt because he will not be contesting the full series. Yeah, correct. So uh, all signs point toward Johnny Girard. And now we had some penalties assessed uh, last race. We had some guys jump to start. They had to be held at the finish. We had uh, Stu Baylor a little further out than what he was supposed to be. So it cost him a position, ended up with a fourth on the day. Uh, his brother uh, able to get up, Grant Baylor able to take that third place position. Um, for, yeah, so uh, how do we handle that? I mean, wh wh where do you go from there if you're Stu? Yeah, I think if you're Stu, I mean, obviously this is a guy that uh, we had on our very short list of championship contenders yeah. coming into 2024. Uh, he's got himself in second place in the points, which is a great spot to be. But without a race win yet and that points gap just continuing to widen, yeah. I mean, it, it's time to uh, definitely assert yourself, grab a win, uh, max points. And, and at this point with a nearing one race lead you almost got to hope that uh johnny gerard gets pushed a little further back in the results so you can really start chipping away at that gap that makes sense and, and every time you doubt the man Stu baylor when the chips are down that seems to be when Stu shines so maybe today is that day uh, i know you had mentioned it johnny uh we were four rounds in you said if you had told me Stu baylor will still not have a win i'd say you're absolutely incorrect he's got a win by now he doesn't maybe today's that day yeah it could be but there's one rider we absolutely cannot overlook today we overlook it uh, yes. all 
the time. He's, he's third in third place right in the overall points, and he is a hometown boy. Yep. Lives as close to here as you possibly can. And uh, from, you know, right here in Tennessee, yep. Jordan Ashburn, you know, if you, you talk about home field advantage, I mean, he very likely could go and sleep in his own bed <laughs> very uh, much. after yeah. the race tonight without much driving at yep. all. And uh, this could be the day that he gets it done and grabs his first win in 2024. It's a very good point. And this season is almost reminiscent of his championship season where he's just quietly there lurking in the shadows. And then he strikes and he was a national champion. So, hey, the stage is set. Uh, we are excited. A new racing facility. We talked about some of the highlights. Oh, before we uh, kick it to the track description, we got to talk a little XC2. Uh, those guys have a pretty stellar day. Yeah, and it's starting to become a two-rider show up yeah. between the uh, Landers Racing KTM teammates yep. of uh, Angus Reardon. Reardon. Angus Reardon. Reardon, yes. And very good. Uh, Grant Davis. Yep. You know, they've, they've each gotten wins, and they really battled it down to the final corners uh, just a few weeks ago there in South Carolina with Angus grabbing the win uh, and also with it wrestling the points to lead away from yep. Grant Davis. Uh, but those guys are one and two in points and uh, obviously joining them on the podium uh, after it was all said and done was Thad Duvall. Yeah, 989 yeah. on that Red Bear Rocky Mountain ATV MC team. Uh, a return to the podium, to yep. the XC2 podium after a long, long way away, yes. uh, time away for Thad Duvall. So a lot of that was a very popular podium for Thad and will be uh, interesting to see today if he can get back up in there in the mix again. But talking of... Uh, you know, championship contenders, Liam Draper, really kind of yep. needing to get the ball rolling uh, to get back up in the mix for that championship. Yeah, he's he got to get up in there and get in the fight with those guys. All right, hey, we've set the stage as far as the racing action is concerned. New track, new facility, the old gray. What's it going to look like for these guys as far as terrain is concerned? For that, we'll throw it to Jared Bolton with a Yamaha track description. Well, thanks, guys. Here we are at the old gray GNCC. Finally, a new place. And uh, you know what? You know what you think I'm going to say? There's a little bit of something for everybody here. Well, there's not. If you're a good, technical, old-school rider, this is the track for you. This place has a lot of rock. But guess what? When you get on the far back side of this property, there's some really good dirt back there. So it'll give you a little bit of break from that rock. But once you start back over here to the main side of the property, guess what? You're back in the rock again. So the biggest thing about this new venue is the rock. You're going to see it out there. And, of course, we did get a little bit of rain leading into the weekend. It's going to make those rocks really slick. The sun's out, track's gonna come around and be really beautiful, but rocks don't really dry out so much. It takes us quite a while. Make for some interesting racing. Gonna be awesome to check out a new place. Can't wait to see it all unfold. That's this weekend's track description. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Jared, for that Yamaha track description of this all-new Old Gray property. These guys are going to get ready to go out and do battle. We're going to let Mikey Waynes head down to the starting line to do some 10-second calls to get this race off and rolling. We're going to check in with a word from our sponsors. We'll be back with all the racing action live on Racer TV. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Well, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related, so... Ah, yee! Oh, that is a vibrating pain. generation believes they've invented the best way with age comes wisdom we've come to realize that every piece of knowledge is learned passed down from those generous and patient enough to teach Legacy, it's not about leaving something behind to be remembered by. It's realizing that the future lies within the next generation. Let's call it a night. All right. 
The nature of true progress is humbly building something bigger than yourself. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. This is our legacy. Whatever you drive, however you drive. Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles. So you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. Unleash aggression, reliability, and premium quality with Kenda Tires. Delivering exceptional performance on all types of vehicles. Automotive, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, bicycles, trailers, lawn and garden, and even golf. Trust Kenda Tires to guide you on your next adventure. Kenda, designed for your journey. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Cometic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Cometic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best inside their engine. Cometic Gaskets are always constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environments. Whether it's a championship on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts alike depend on Cometic. Cometic Gasket, sealing championships since 1989. Progressive GNCC Racing is brought to you by Progressive. Progressive could save you hundreds of dollars on your automobile and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized e-turbo bicycles. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com. Get ready. Nothing going there. We are now under seven minutes before we should see the checkered flag in this with Dante Oliveira trying to capture that win here at Camp Coker. One more turn to go, and Ricky Towery will present him. There it is. Bang! Checkered flag flies for Dante Oliveira, grabbing the overall win. Johnny Girard will finish second and, most importantly, keep that overall points lead. How about that? Stu Hall in the mail. Very the FMF line. PowerPoint. Stu is one of the most gritty riders yes. out there. We've seen him ride through crazy injuries and all sorts of stuff, so can't count him out. And yeah, it's been really, really interesting racing today. Racing dirt bikes, it's it's a lifestyle. It's something where every single choice you make sets you on the path to, to how you're gonna succeed or perform. You live this every second of the day.
The old gray kind of suits my style since, you know, it's, it's where I'm from and pretty excited about the race and I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. River bed, rock, uh, shell rock underneath, so it's going to be a slippery bay. Tennessee is, the terrain is usually pretty rocky and, and nasty, so I think that'll suit me. I enjoy anything kind of technical. It separates the men from the boys, to say the least. Technical, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it is exciting to go to a new track. The wife likes Tennessee, so uh, yeah, what can be wrong? RacerTV.com, round number five of the 2024 Progressive Grand National Cross Country Racing Series, presented by Specialize, your AMA National Championship. And as you guys are tuning in on Racer TV, we are about to introduce your starting row for the XC1 Pro Class. And here we go, rolling to the line, first in points. The 969 out of North Carolina on an FMF factory racing KTM, Johnny Gerard. Rolling to the line next, the 514 out of Hodges, South Carolina on a Rocky Mountain Red Bear Kawasaki, Stu Baylor. Rolling to the line next. Oh, no place like home, baby. The number three out of Livingston, Tennessee, aboard the Coastal Racing Factory Gas Gas, Jordan Ashburn. Rolling to the line next. The three, one, four out of South Carolina on a Babbitt's Online Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki. The Grizzly, Grant Baylor. Roll into the line next. The 2 1 2 out of Duval, Washington, aboard the Am Pro Yamaha. He's rough, he's rowdy, Ricky Russell. Roll into the line next. The 1 7 8. Rider out of Australia aboard the Babbitts Online Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki, Lyndon Snodgrass. Roll into the line next, the number seven on a JS7 Sherco Racing Sherco, Josh Strang. And roll into the line next, the number one, your defending champion, Aboard the Rockstar Energy Factory Racing Husqvarna, Craig DeLong. And rolling to the line next, the 282 two out of North Carolina. Aboard the Phoenix Racing Honda, Mike Wachowski. Roll into the line next, the 336 three, out of Elkin, North Carolina, aboard the Coastal Racing Factory Gas Gas, Ryder Lafferty. And roll into the line next, the 347 out of Jefferson, Georgia, on an Active Air Max Motorsports and FXR backed Husqvarna, Evan Smith. Roll into the line next, the 341 out of East China, Michigan, on a total performance GFX turbo speed tuning back Kawasaki, Mitchell France. 
And roll under the line next, the 5-2-3 at a Boonville, North Carolina on the Morgantown Power Sports Tealy Energy back ride, Lane Michael. And last but certainly not least, a 7-3-9 out of Morganton, North Carolina, aboard the Rockstar Energy Factory Racing Husqvarna, Trevor Bollinger. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your starting row for the XC1 Pro Class here at the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires Old Gray GNCC. And as our XC1 Pro riders make their way to the starting row, row number one, DJ Judd exits the Monster Energy Activation Transport, hops into the Yamaha R-Max 1000, throws on the sparkle helmet, details, baby, details. That's what it's about. This is where we like to say, DJ Judd, remove the meat. As DJ Judd makes his way off of the starting line, all eyes will go down into turn number one, where the maestro, Ricky Towery, will take the reins of this race, and we go as Ricky goes. Whole shot award on the line for the XC1 Pro Class, courtesy of the Steel City Medical Center. As our pro riders woo, get amped up and ready to roll. And we wait on the official word. We got a head nod and a thumbs up from Jeremy Holbert as Ricky Towery now will step out onto the track. Pulls his sleeves up, looks down at the watch, steps forward and lets our riders know one minute. One minute until we're ready to go. Old Gray GNCC Racing. All eyes fixated on turn number one now for that XC1 Pro Class as Ricky now steps back out onto the track. He will look down at the watch once more to keep an eye on the time for the waving of the blue flag. And there it is, blue flag waves, blue flag waves, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, as we are just about ready to roll now. And I gotta ask you, Tennessee, are you ready to go GNCC racing? Oh, that's pretty good. But you heard Mr. Cotter say this is the largest inaugural round of a GNCC in history. So I'm gonna ask you one more time, are you ready to go GNCC racing? seconds for row number one, the XC1 Pro. Bang, and they're off. Oh, Mike Wachowski with a good drive. Craig DeLong tries to cut him off on the inside, but it is going to be the 282 Phoenix Racing Honda of Mike Wachowski grabbing that Steel City Medical Center whole shot award. A rough start for the 314 of Grant Baylor. Oh, and it looked like Stu Baylor might have got into it as well. In turn number two, waiting on the okay from Ricky Towery here. XC2 250 Pro Class, Steel City Medical Center, whole shot award up for grabs. Rui Barbosa, Tyler Palmer, Gus Reardon, Cody Barnes, Liam Draper, Josh Toth, Toby Cleveland, Jack Edmondson, Brody Johnson, Jesse Ansley, Jason Liscomb, Tay! seconds, Stephen Nichols and Grant Davis. Bang, they're off. The 922 of Grant Davis up in the fight. To Toby Cleveland was there for a minute. No, it's going to go to the 1-1-8. One, one Out in front, grabbing that whole shot and early lead. Man, that might have been Brody Johnson. Row number three, FMF XC3, Low Jack Cycle Sales, whole shot, 10 seconds. Zachary Davidson, Jeffrey Werner, James Churn the third, Dakota DeVore, Sawyer Karatura, Owen Barnes, Jack Walker, Joe Schreiber, and Dustin Simpson. Sawyer Karatura with a good drive, and he'll take it. 
On that Steel City Men's Clinic back ride, grabbing that low jack cycle sales whole shot award. As we turn our attention, to, oh, late start for the 822 machine. Row number four, open A, 10 seconds. Dylan T, De La Cruz, Kenton Coleman, Samuel Evans, Ezra Prine, Neil Enman, Daniel Spurgeon, Alex Luger, Dustin McLaughlin, Hunter Myers, Jackson Davis, Trevor Hewlett. Oh, five, nine, Samuel Evans on that P3 fly racing back gas gas out of West Virginia, grabbing a whole shot and early lead right there as we turn our attention now to the 250A. 10 seconds. Lane Whitmer, Ryan Piper, Joe, Joe Cunningham, Cooper Jones, Bub Sasha, Jason Tino, T-Rex, Nick DeFeo, Gavin Simon, Hunter Bush, Will Steven Piper, that's gonna be the 249 of Gavin Simon out of Bennington, Vermont, on that precision off-road back ride. Blue flag waves, and here we go. 150A, Tyler Shields, Tucker Kenry, Keaton Noltkamper, 10 seconds. Rayleigh Messer, Caleb Lane, Michael Meyer, Walker Morris, Braden Hatchman, Jacob Bullen, and Kiefer Galliano. Around the outside, the 227, a fist in the air. That is Tucker Kenry doing it for the Graham, baby. On that Andrew Cycles back Yamaha. Out of Ohio, grabbing that whole shot and early lead. And here we go. Reset the deck. Four stroke. A lights. Ten seconds. Colton Shields, Van Adams, Matthew Davis, Rivers Morris, Chase Landers, Ty Ely, Brady Beerbaum, Ryan Amancio. Joshua Connor, John Gentry, Logan Crawford, Sam Hall, Anton Ferrucci, 228. That is Rivers Morris, a little checkup from the neck up, but he gets it done in that Moose Racing XC gear and Battery Park off road back ride. Letting the boys know. Now he's just got to go keep it going for three hours. Little tangle up right there in the third turn. Senior A, 40 plus. Oh, a big tangle up in turn two. I was busy looking the other direction. All right, you guys, please hold on that starting line. Wait on Ricky Towery's signal. There he goes, got his foot out of there. Wasn't even his machine, it was the other dude. This is gnarly. How about it? Here we go, 10 seconds. Senior A, 40 plus, Frank Messina, Stephen Meacham, Cody Hosta, Andy Shea, Nathan Ar Arling, Robert Johnson, Buddy Barnes, and Darren Darmos. Ooh, tight out front, three-way battle. The 184 tries to break free and does. Grabs a whole shot and early lead. Good and clean as they head off into the woods. We reset with a junior A, 25 plus. Andrew Boggs, Braden Moore, Mario Tonchev, 10 seconds. Jeremy Wallstrom, Zachary Connor, Russell Smith, Benjamin Fricks, Evan Maynard, Travis Hardcastle, Coleman Brinson, Brock McCoy, Matthew Dreyer, Corey Jordan, Andrew Clark, Cody Meeks, Jason Key. One, three, six. How about, man, that might have been four, three, six. I did not catch the number on that one. It was tight nonetheless. Vet A, 30 plus. Robbie Norwood, Kevin Apu, Dustin Millam, Josh Cito. Seconds set the Barry Danner, Danny Hall, Dylan Fleming, Ryan Burkfield, Matthew Pope, Daniel Sims, Gregory Funk. You know what we say who's got the funk? Gregory's got the funk around turn number one. Oh, four, six, eight. Daniel Sims gets it at the last second. Mercy sakes, alive. Got in his pocket, stole his lunch money. Now he can't get milk at break. A feel for him. Here we go. Open B. Ten seconds. Lane Morrison, Chandler Taylor, Nate Garrison, John Bottomy, Trenton Stonecipher, Chris Gates, Hayden Van Curen, Tyler Delaney, Robert Hamrick, Blake Freiberger, Lieber Ponce, Nathaniel Gibbs, Caleb Hagen, Landon Trippin, Dylan Fleming, Clayton Pratt. Two six five of Hayden Van Curen out of Laurelville, Ohio. Grabbing that whole shot and early lead. A couple riders getting tangled up. Quick to get back on their machines. 
and back in the fight. 10 seconds, 250B, Devin Moore, Ty Atkinson, Zachary Brazow, Gage Clayton, Chase Pragreba, Cade Hayford, Brian Puska, Lennox Riley, Hayden Harris, Briar Menace, Braden Billing, Lucas Rubenstein, 081, that is Devin Moore out of Queensville, Ontario, on that DCM Motorsports and Country Corners Racing back gas gas with a whole shot and early lead right there. 150B coming up next. 10 seconds. Jaden Schlegel, Nico Pursuti, Landon Wentz, Landon Phillips, Gavin Hampton, Ben Bauman, James Simpson, Jarman Lilly, Jaden Ferris, Mason Sakanikas, Arson Boyer, and James Meek. 975 out front. It's going to be the 975 on the helmet on cue on that veteran family racing fly racing back KTM at James Meek out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Four stroke B lights. TJ Brown, Landon Workman, Cody Harding. 10 seconds. Caden Annan, Bryce Woodrum, Jack Algary, Jacob Mitchell, Samuel Tesner, Hayden Cunningham, Joseph Shaylot, Sean Cochran, Ryan Pitterich. Meatball, Jacob McPherson, Keenan Rupp, Brian Thacker, and Wiley Tucker. Four, nine, four. Look at the focus by Meatball. On that factory connection, back to Husk Barnum. Grabbing the whole shot and early lead. A few riders getting tangled up in turn one. No matter, still going to send it. They're on their way. Senior B, 40 plus. Larry Hopper, Fernando Pino. Ten seconds. Miss Lu Miss Leno Batista, Brandon Black, Nathan Welch, Adam Gnostic, Brandon Hagen, Levi Rawson, Jason Frecker, and Aaron McAfee. 464 out in front. That's Levi Rawson out of Missouri and turns it into a whole shot right there. Doing it for the gram. I saw you taking the pictures, ladies. She said, that's my man's out there pulling the whole shot. Now he's got to keep it up for three hours. All good. Here we go. 10 seconds, Junior B, 25 plus. Adam Machinsky, Arton Shelley, Michael Vandalender, Taylor Pinto, Cole Johnson, Devin Hill, Jeremy Johnson, Devin Hall, Austin Frank, Douglas Randolph, Alex Grunder, Ethan Stevens, Aaron Waldrop, Zach Cummins, and Billy Saliga. 351, how much you want to give for it now? That's Michael Vandalender out of Kingston, Ohio on the Yamaha. Grabbing the whole shot and early lead, and here we go. Vet B, 30 plus in 10 seconds. Kylie Zygmunt, Justin Cadeau, Michael Jarosko, Corey Schaefer, Daniel Zortman, Andy Schnetzler, Corey Armstrong, Pete Pintrinti, Bryce Foster, Zachary Floyd, Brandon McCoy, Corey Mountain, Thad Creasy, Corey King. Woo! 28 on the ride. Might have been Ricky Stanley, I believe. Grabbing that whole shot and early lead. And do we have a free and clear racetrack? We do. Mercy sakes alive. We already got Carnage in the XC1 out in front. How's it going to shake down? Your points leader, Johnny Gerrard, looking to keep that points lead. Can a Stu Baylor rebound after a nasty start by him? Grant Davis or Grant Baylor got some time to make up as well. All that and more coming up after we get a word from our sponsors. We'll take a short break and be right back with more from the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires Old Gray GNCC. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related, so... Ah, yee! Oh, that is a vibrating pain.
Every generation believes they've invented the best way. With age comes wisdom. We've come to realize that every piece of knowledge is learned, passed down from those generous and patient enough to teach. Let's bog it off the bottom. Let's take a look. Legacy. It's not about leaving something behind to be remembered by. It's realizing that the future lies within the next generation. Let's call it a night. The nature of true progress is humbly building something bigger than yourself. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. This is our legacy. Whatever you drive, however you drive. Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles so you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. Progressive GNCC Racing is brought to you by Progressive. Progressive could save you hundreds of dollars on your automobile and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized e-turbo bicycles. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com. Get ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Racer TV for round number five of the Progressive Grand National Cross Country Series. We are here in beautiful Monterey, Tennessee for the Dunlop Motorcycles Tires Old Gray GNCC. My name is Jackson Burrell, and I'm here alongside Zach Heron to bring you today's action. And speaking of action, stay tuned as Zach will be taking us through the start recap. Yeah, thanks, Jackson. It has already been a historic weekend here at the inaugural Old Gray GNCC as we take a look at the Specialized Start recap. The sun is shining, the mud is gone, and we have one of the roughest tracks these riders have seen all year long. We take a look, starting with your XC1 Pro Class. It was the number one of Craig DeLong trying to slide it up the inside, but how about Mike Wachowski making the move on that Phoenix Racing Honda? He's followed by the local boy, Jordan Ashburn, sitting in second with Craig DeLong holds down third, but take a look at this. A little bit of pile up there. That's Stu Baylor as well as Ryder Lafferty on the ground colliding with Johnny Girard as they got ready to head off into the woods. And as you can see, dust going to be a crucial factor in this as well. Uh, Grant Baylor, the last one you see heading off into the woods, had some mishaps as well. So bad start to the Baylors, but they're fired up and charging forward. We take a look now at the XC2 class, and everybody's slipping and sliding. But holding tight up the inside is going to be the number 118 machine. Looking like that is Brody Johnson grabbing the win. The 922 of Grant Davis right behind in second. Now look at this. Once again, we have one of our favorites. That is Gus Reardon going down in that second corner. Actually, technically the third corner as they got ready to head off into the woods. It is deceiving soil out here. We take a look at the FMF XC3 125 Pro-Am. And look at that. It is screaming. I wish you could hear those 125s wide open as they came down the front straight away. And look at that. All by his lonesome out front. The 545 of Sawyer Caratura gets the job done and grabs the whole shot here in the XC3 125 Pro-Am class and uh, ha probably had the most space of any of our classes as they led off into the Woods Jackson. We've seen it all day long. Huge shout out to Specialized for that start recap, but this racetrack as now you're getting a little taste of what's in store. It looks like Jordan Ashburn has taken over the lead. There's Mike Wachowski, Craig DeLong, followed by the Trevor Bollinger making some moves. Ricky Russell, there is your points leader, Johnny Girard on that FMF Red Bull KTM, followed by Evan Smith, Josh Strang. Looks like that is Grant uh, Stu Baylor, immediately followed by his brother Grant. And you can see just a little bit of standing water surviving in some of these wooded sections, but a uh, dr mostly dry track. We've got some roots, a ton of rocks, and it has made for some great racing 
all day long. Uh, Jackson, I can't wait for these next three hours. Yeah, we have quite the race on our hands. As you can see from that first camera shot at just how many rocks have been exposed out here on this course. We're getting told there is a lot of rocks out here. But on the left side of your screen, you're going to see the Yamaha Racing Race format. This is going to be a 9.8 mile long track here today. The race length is going to be three hours. And then, of course, we're going to have our XC1 Open Pro, which is an open class. Our XC2, which is a 250 Pro class. And then, of course, our FMF XC3 125 Pro Amateur Class. And, Zach, we have an exciting day of racing in store for us. As you can see, the barn there in this shot, they'll be getting to go straight through that. Absolutely, yeah. We take a look at the Yamaha Racing Live track map, and uh, like we said, only 9.8 miles. You might think, wow, that's not a lot of mileage. I'm telling you, the speed's cutting down. Uh, you'll hear it all day long. Old school. as a couple of new school announcers. We got an old school GNCC racing track. It is tight. Uh, it is very technical, and it is all about being able to keep it on two wheels to get the finish out here at the old grade. Now, let's take a look at the points standing. Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com bringing you your 2024 points standing and it has all been about Johnny Girard aboard that uh, FMF Red Bull KTM machine. Uh, he has lost two overalls but as far as the XC1 class goes it was only his teammate Dante Oliveira who got him beat. Stu Baylor not too far behind with 82 points sitting in the second place spot. Jordan Ashburn in third with 66. Uh, Grant Davis now jumping inside the top five as does Gus Reardon for the overall points and those guys have been stand up performers coming out of the second row as well. But the question on everyone's mind has been who is going to step up and uh, really give Johnny Girard a run for his money in that XC1 class? The guy has been firing on all cylinders. Could we see a new winner out here today, Jackson? Yep. Hopefully so. We'll see. We'll see if anybody has anything for Johnny Girard here today. Our last race winner, I do not believe, is out on the course. Am I correct, Zach? As far as I know, I haven't seen uh, Dante Al uh, Oliveira making his way around. And, uh, yeah, I believe we're getting word that he is not out there today. So, uh, Johnny Girard trying to hang tough there for the KTM boys. He's done a fantastic job so far. And as we take a look at the Yamaha Racing Live Drone, we've got your, I believe that's the leaders on screen right there. Uh, we talked about it. Jordan Ashburn, uh, Jackson, we weren't around for his championship year, but uh, I was watching GNCC on Race Through TV. He's kind of very similar to how he is off or with the helmet off as well. He's not outspoken, all right? He's not, uh, he's not flashy. He's not going to make a lot of noise. But sure enough, slow and steady, he's back there. He's strong. And when it really starts to count towards the end of the season, Jordan Ashburn's in the right position. Now, he was at that last race. We saw flashes of him. But once again, he didn't really do anything to make us go, oh, wow, look at Jordan Ashburn. But he had a solid result. He's getting more and more comfortable. And here, I could hear it when we had opening ceremonies. He's got a little bit, bit of that home team fan group uh, cheering him on as well. No doubt about it. He is Mr. Consistent. And like you said, this is his hometown race. He has a lot of fans here. Everybody was going crazy when he was announced. So you know he is one to go out here and show all of his friends and family what he is made of without a doubt and we are taking a look at uh, Jordan Ashburn and it sounds like Johnny Girard has already made moves and has uh, gotten back behind him so wow that is bad news for the rest of the field if Girard is able to slice and dice his way through that quick uh, we could be in store for for what we've seen already but I tell you what you got the big number three out front leading the way he is certainly not going to give anything up uh, but this is also going to be one of those races, Jackson. We heard uh, trail boss Ryan Eccles talking about it. This might be tougher as far as physicality than even the sands of Camp Coker. All right. We got uh, it's not crazy hot out here. A little warm as we see your leaders on screen. But it sounds like we have an extremely technical and brutal track in store for our top riders. And tight. That has been one of the key words. Tight. You'll see these riders bouncing off the tree. And look, look at, at that. that. Stu Baylor is coming up. And I'll tell you one thing. He is not going to be happy with Johnny Girard hitting him in that first corner. I guarantee he is going to be fired up here in this one. I said it to uh, the Rocky Mountain ATV MC boys in the first turn. I said, well, both the Baylor boys have had their mishaps and they're fired up, headed into turn three. We are in for a race. Look at that. Stu Baylor was one of the last riders out of your XC1 field, if not the last rider, to make it into the woods and has already made his way into the fourth place spot. Now, if you think back to yesterday, Jackson, it was Hunter Hart who got a bad start. He made a ton of great moves early, but the question was whether or not that energy that he had to use early in the race cost him on the big end. We'll find out the same thing here for 
both Johnny Girard and Stu Baylor, but really Stu Baylor making the majority of the moves right now in fourth place and looked like he was knocking on the door a third trying to make a pass around Ricky Russell. We take a look now at the seven mile mark. Believe that was your XC2 leader. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that was Grant Davis. We know Gus Reardon hit the ground a little bit earlier uh, in about that turn number three. And uh, going to be interesting to see whether Grant can run away with it out of the XC2 class. Uh, I don't know if that was a still shot or a live shot, but I still did not see another XC2 rider. Grant Davis has uh, checked out trying to make quick work of it here in XC2. And that's exactly what he is going to try to do here in this one. So we'll keep our eyes out on the XC2 as they make their way around for lap number one. But right now on screen, I believe we are seeing our XC1 class. That looks like Gerard in that second place still. Jordan Ashburn leading the way. Jordan Ashburn coming out here firing. He is always a consistent rider right there in the mix. But today he says, I want to get out front and get away. But he is going to have his work cut out for him with that factory KTM machine just behind him. Johnny Gerard. Johnny has been on fire all season long. And now we'd like to welcome Mr. Ben Kelly into the studio talking about factory KTM. Here we go. What have you been seeing out there, Ben? Yeah, thanks, guys. I uh, watched the start there and tried to go catch the guys at another spot. But um, yeah, I decided to have to make my way over here. But uh, yeah, I'll see what happens on screen here and start calling some racing with you. And I'd like to have you back in here, man. Obviously, we'd like to see you out on the track as well. But uh, did you have a good time at the last race up here calling it with us? Yeah, I did. It was cool. Something different. And, you know, I'd be watching the race anyways. And uh, yeah, picking apart, doing what I can to study the racers. So it was cool. And yeah, back again to, to give it a shot. Absolutely, man. We're glad to have you here in the tower. Now, brand new location out here at the Old Gray. Uh, I'm always curious. We talk about what, what we're able to see when we look at a track like this, but you're one of the best of the best. When you are, are walking around and taking a look, as you see, going through the barn now, your leader, Jordan Ashburn, what is your opinion here on this Old Gray facility? It looks really good. I'm jealous to not be out there. Taking a look, uh, looks like Stu Baylor has made the pass around Ricky Russell and is already trying to apply the pressure to the back of Johnny Girard, trying to make it a three-rider breakaway, but Ricky Russell's still back there on that Ampro Yamaha. He's not letting them run off quite yet. Um, now, Ben, have you been here all weekend? Did you see the, the muddy and crazy conditions that we had Friday? Because if you'd have pulled in this morning and said we were had standing water on parts of the track on Friday, a lot of people wouldn't have believed you. Yeah, I've been here since Friday, but didn't come to the track till Sunday morning. You know, I, I came out for the Landers KTM dealership opening, and, and that was really cool. And, um, you know, honestly, nowadays with so many riders out here at GNCC, you need rain as late as Friday. Otherwise, the track's going to be dusty. And honestly, as we're seeing, conditions are, are perfect, is what I would call perfect conditions. Yeah, it's uh, you couldn't have said it any better. Over 600 riders in that AM bike race this afternoon. I mean, our, our local motocross tracks would be doing backflips if they had 600 entries for the whole weekend. One race, all of those riders out on track at one time. And so we talked about how tight this racetrack is. Jackson, what are you seeing? I saw you Stu jumping. Baylor trying to make a pass. And like I was saying earlier, you know he's fired up. He might have some favors to give back here. So I want to keep our eyes on Stu Baylor trying to make that pass on Gerard. And yeah, this, this is impressive. I don't know if you guys saw it on off the start there in that third corner. Johnny Gerard came in pretty hot and uh, pushed a few riders around. Stu ended up being one that went down, and he was pretty animated that he wasn't happy. He was throwing his hands. He was saying some curse words, revving his bike. Um, but, yeah, it looks like he's made quick work, and I'm surprised. I wasn't sure this track would have much passing. It looked really tight and twisty, but... Um, him and Gerard both, uh, second and third on the wheel of Jordan. They're they're making it happen. And some people, they don't like to get fired up. They want to keep their heart rate down. They want to keep calm. But it seems like Stu Baylor, when he is mad, he's a man on a mission. And that's what it, we look like we got here on our hands today. Well, I'll tell you what, Stu Baylor, he's, he's at a, a steady bonfire, right? He's always got a little bit of fire in him as well. All Johnny Gerard did was just pour a bit of gas on top of it because, yeah, he was fired up. Uh, looked like he was slapping the back of that Kawasaki trying to get it going as they headed off into the woods. And clearly, whatever he did, he got the bike fired up as well because he has made all kinds of passes you can see riders immediately grabbing for some hydration we've seen mud plenty this year but uh ben talk about just how different it is trying to make your way through brand new track first lap for these guys but in the dusty conditions as well yeah i'm sure all these guys have checked the track out on their e-bikes a whole bunch so they know where they're going i'm sure Stu had some good lines picked out johnny as well uh for passing in case they didn't get a good start and I, I see the aggression early, like you said, from Stu. He's probably trying to make his way to the front early before everyone gets settled into the, the main race line and gets the track learned and gets comfortable running the fast pace because it'll just only be harder to pass from there. 
One thing to note is Stu and Grant were right there together and how much more ground Stu has been able to make up than Grant. That shows a lot here early in this one. Yeah, I mean, both of the Baylor boys known for their intensity now. Now, Grant, I will say, at least from, from my opinion, he seems like a little bit more of a, a slow burn. As the race comes on, that's when he really starts to come to life. We saw at the end of Camp Coker there, guy I believe was 23 seconds faster in the competition at one point or another. But Stu Baylor coming in with a little extra oomph on the weekend. Uh, after our Racer TV broadcast logged off, uh, we did find out that there was a penalty handed out to Stu due to going a little too far off track. Uh, his brother Grant would actually step up and grab the final podium spot. So I'll take that back. We had a little bit of gas thrown on it. We got uh, brand new timber thrown on the bonfire as well. However big you can make the flame, that's what's uh, under Stu Baylor right now as your leaders come across the line. And uh, once again, uh -oh. I can't do it. Yeah. Third. Must have had an issue. Wow. So what happened to Baylor? Looks like he just dropped back to fourth. So still right there with the pack. And that's how quickly things can shake up, right? As uh, he was on the rear wheel of Johnny Girard, just like that, a quick mistake, especially on this first lap. And uh, we heard Walker Fowler say it yesterday. It takes 15 minutes to make five seconds and four and a half to lose. Yeah, and that's, that's something you don't want to happen often because that can just continue to frustrate you and you're just using that extra energy. Once you get up front here, you just, you got to try to play it smart. You know, you got to be aggressive. And, oh, Lyndon here having a bike issue. Oh, tough luck there for the Babbitts Online Monster Energy Kawasaki. Lyndon Snodgrass had a solid performance and was really uh, feeling well early. I heard him catch up with Mikey Waynes. Uh, sounds like he was in good spirits and ready to try to put in a good result out here. So tough luck for Snodgrass. Uh, ben, it's interesting that you bring up the, the emotions and frustration. I, I Not knowing you super well, but you seem like a rather level-headed guy. Talk about how when things go wrong, uh, the, almost a quicksand effect. One thing leads to another, leads to another. How hard is it to keep yourself from going into that, that dark place in your head? Yeah, it honestly just depends how you're feeling. You know, when you're feeling good, even when you're having a solid race, you're going to be making mistakes. You're out there on such a long course. It's always changing for three hours. Um, when things are going well, you know, you just you just move, fast to, move past them, and there's plenty of time to make it up. Um, the worst thing you can do is get frustrated. You know, having a little bit of, of anger is, is good. For certain riders, it makes you push a little harder, and you're just, you're just fighting to get to the front. But the best thing you can do is, is really just try to forget about it and um, – just do do what you would normally do because riding over your head rarely does that work. Yeah, rarely does it go the way that you're hoping for sure. Now, uh, we talked about kind of sneaky quiet is Jordan Ashburn. Uh, you spent many a times racing him. He gets out front early like this. Uh, a little bit of the hometown race for him as well. Uh, hometown advantage or is it uh, a hometown disadvantage? Everybody says it's a little bit of extra pressure. Some people say it's not. What are your opinions on the hometown thing? Maybe extra pressure, but not more than anything. It's it's going to motivate him. If I were to have a home race, or you know, I don't have a home race with GNCC, but anytime I can have friends and family out there, it just you just want to do good for them. And for some reason, it, it puts a little more pep in your step. And I'm sure he's feeling that. I'm sure he's rode here on this property and close to home. He's familiar with the terrain. And it sounds like we were actually able to catch up with the Coastal Racing Gas Gas leader right now. Let's hear from Jordan Ashman. The old gray, so. I'm pretty excited about the old gray this year. You know, it's it's always I've always wanted a race close to home for me, and that's about as close as it's going to get. We're about 20 minutes away from there, and uh, that's my home Tennessee terrain. So, you know, I think it'll be an interesting venue. And uh, as far as trails and riding there, like it's going to be all new tracks. So, kind of know what the terrain's like. It's going to be really rocky and technical. Um, kind of suits my style since you know it's, it's where I'm from and pretty excited about the race and I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a good one. I hope we had a get a great turnout and everybody likes the event and we can do it for years to come. I'm, I'm really excited about that and just uh, for our area there's a lot of people interested in you know GNCC and, and what I do and for them to be able to come out to an event that's 20 minutes away 30 minutes away and uh, not because a lot of times you know they can't travel you know five, six hours to, to go watch a race. So I think it'll shed some light on, you know, what GNCC is in our community. And we have a big group of, you know, guys around home that ride motorcycles and race motorcycles. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be an awesome event. 
So there you go. You heard it from the number three himself, Jordan Ashburn, feeling feisty. Uh, you heard it from Ben. Maybe a little extra motivation with the hometown crowd out here hanging him out. Uh, the crowd went absolutely electric in opening ceremonies for him, and he is putting on a show for him here at the inaugural Dunlop Tires Old Gray GNCC. Things are heating up, folks. We got uh, everybody that we were wanting to see up front has made their way towards the pack. We've got uh, some slow burners coming up. Here is how things kicked off. It's Jordan, uh, actually Mike Wachowski leading at this point. Jordan Ashburn in that second place spot. There is the contact. So it was uh, Johnny Gerard coming in a little on the hot side into that turn number three. Gets together with Ryder Lafferty. And unfortunately, Lafferty looks like collects Stu Baylor as well. Here is the running order as they go. Jordan Ashburn, Johnny Gerard, and the man, Stu Baylor. He's fired up and he's worked his way back to the rear wheel of the KTM rider. We saw him have a little mishap, but he's still inside that top five. But everybody is chasing this guy, Jordan Ashburn, aboard the number three, trying to bring things home here at the Old Gray. I'm Jordan Ashburn, and you're watching GNCC Live at RacerTV.com. aggression, reliability, and premium quality with Kenda Tires. Delivering exceptional performance on all types of vehicles. Automotive, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, bicycles, trailers, lawn and garden, and even golf. Trust Kenda Tires to guide you on your next adventure. Kenda, designed for your journey. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Cometic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Cometic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best inside their engine. Cometic Gaskets are always constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environments. Whether it's a championship on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts alike depend on Cometic. Cometic Gasket, sealing championships since 1989. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. Looking at the old gray barn right there, mile marker number eight. Mikey Wayne's here alongside uh, Zach Heron and Ben Kelly. We welcome Ben back, man. Uh, good to have you back with us. Obviously, we want to see you out there on the track, but is what it is, man. Uh, what do you think of this track so far, dude? Yeah, it looks good. I've said already I'm super jealous. New venue is always exciting. I think maybe that's why we have so many riders out here. And it seems like it's a, it's a good piece of... Um, Good piece of property with a, a lot of variety I've heard from the riders who have, have pedaled the track. So hopefully it makes for some exciting racing. Been good. Zach, you yeah, liking I, it? <laughs> I mean, it has been everything from the micros up to these pro races. We saw four-wheeled action, EMTB action on Friday as well. 
all of these guys seem to love it. Uh, it, it everybody says there's a little bit of everything out here. We got the rocks, we got the roots, and so uh, if you like it, we got it here at Old Gray, and we want to see it out here. If we come back, 600 plus entries in the yeah. AM bike race, Mikey. So a huge turnout, and everybody seems to be enjoying this brand new facility. Yeah, largest uh, inaugural, I think, round is what Tim Cotter said that we've had in, in our history, and I know there was some, obviously some drama getting in and out with the parking situation, but uh, I believe you know our, our powers that be, Chris Landers, uh, we can get back here and, and we can make this thing really, really good from top to bottom. I have no doubt about that. And I know Mother Nature not a fan of, of traffic. True. But Mother Nature's a fan of GNCC racing. Yes. She's got us set up for a great track. Uh, as we saw in some of those earlier shots, still plenty of moisture in the woods. A little bit of dry stuff out here as well. Like I said, just add it to the list. A little bit of mud, a little bit of dust to go along with it. So great racing in store for us here from the Old Gray. Yeah, loving it. And uh, how about it? Jordan Ashburn leading that XC1. Your buddy Josh Toth uh, out there doing his thing out in front early in this one. Uh, Johnny Gallagher was in here a moment ago, and he said, well, maybe kind of expected early on in this one. You feel that way, Ben? Or is this going to be another Toth uh, shock in the world thing? I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> the track looks pretty rocky and rudy from what I've heard, and that's what the New England guys like. Um, and nowadays with XC2, you yeah. know, those guys are so good. They're always pushing the pace early, and they're going to be up front. We'll just have to see if they can hold on for three hours. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like an impressive performance already from Grant Davis out of that XC2 class. Uh, the, the one camera shot that we got him, he was all by his lonesome out there. Yeah. We, we thought that was out front, so we're going to double check here shortly. But, yeah, it looks like Josh Toth picking up exactly where he left off. Man, it doesn't matter what row you put him That's, on. The guy knows how to go fast. Yeah, yeah especially after that, that last round at Camp Coker. I know he was doing good and had a little malfunction run out of fuel, so I'm sure he's got a little, a little animosity going out, out here trying to have another good round. So there is your top 10 as you see it uh, on Racer TV. Toth leading the way out of the XC2. Ashburn, Grant Davis actually talked with Grant's dad prior to today's race, and uh, he was excited about how Grant has done. He said, hey, he's had a little, few little mistakes here and there, but overall he's done really, really well this season. Very happy with him. And then Gerard, obviously, uh, just behind him and Ricky Russell. Um, I, I'm making a quick comment here as we're watching the race on the Yamaha race. Johnny Gerard Pro. down. If you can see him Old there. Oh, Gerard wow. goes down. Good spot from Ben Kelly here. Looks... Uh Looks like, oh, he stayed out in front of Ricky just in time. But there is the, we can call him hometown man. He's a stone's throw, a little checkup from the neck up right there by Ashburn. But he is looking good right now as the rest of the XC1 comes through. Johnny G, Ricky Russell, Stu Baylor. Now Jordan has a little bit of a gap. If, if he could put in a push now and, and try to make it so that Johnny can't uh, see him, it's going to be a lot more difficult on him. You know, following is a lot easier. So it'd be smart for Jordan to maybe put a little push on now. There that, we see Craig Long. Sorry, Mike. No, I was, was going to say, I saw Bollinger, I believe it was, and then Craig DeLong. So Bollinger having a pretty good day so far early in this one. Well, and another thing we noticed, uh, Ben spotted this one as well. Stu Baylor having some issues. Ricky Russell got back around him. He's still in front of him. So Russell either putting up a good fight, maybe Stu Baylor uh, trying to trying to back her down just a little bit, keep that heart rate in check. Uh, he's got plenty of time to try to make some moves forward. But yeah, Ricky Russell on that Ampro Yamaha staying right in the middle of that fight between uh, Stu Baylor and Johnny Gerard. And those are two guys, if you want to stick your hooks into anybody yeah. and stick with them, those two know how to get it done. Yeah, I'd expect Ricky to do good here. You know, from Washington State, he, he rides a lot of rocks. And like we said, this track has a lot of them. And, and Ricky has one at Snowshoe, another rocky venue. So today should be a strong round for him. Now, we've heard a lot of the riders saying slick, but I'm being told multiple different reasons. You've got the, the rocks and roots type slick. You've got some hard pack base type slick, and then you've got, obviously, a little bit of the standing water and wetter conditions as well. When you're facing all different kinds of uh, situations and, and obstacles like this, where do you go with bike setup? It's a brand new location, brand new uh, destination. You guys probably don't have notes stored away for this type of place. Uh, as a rider, when you come into a situation like this, how many question marks are there, and, and how truly dialed in are these? machines right now it all depends on the rider how picky they are but for the most part with off-road racing you always have so much variety that you need to find a setting that you're comfortable with and you just know what the bike's going to do when you hit the bumps you hit the rocks you hit the roots that way you could just you can anticipate everything and with something like this with all this different terrain like you said you got some hard packed dry stuff in the field you, you have some loamy stuff some rocks and roots you just need to know where you can push and be aggressive and where you need to back it down a little bit because sometimes backing it down is, is faster than, than giving 100 percent yeah, absolutely. We were talking about uh, some of the riders, they've got to go race pace, and when they're not giving 100%, that's when they start making mistakes. Others, looks like we just had Stu pass Ricky Russell there. Yeah, look, he's trying to make it a two for on one. Now right back up on the wheel of Johnny. 
he was quick to get up from that crash, but you never know. You know, bars could be a little twisted. He could be a little shaken up. Could be arm pump. Could be a whole lot of things. But he's still still running strong. Let's see if these guys can run Jordan Ashman down. Yeah, curious to see whether or not Stu goes for oh, the pass and for Snodgrass. Yep, Snodgrass looks like he is finished for this one. Tough luck. We caught a glimpse of him earlier. Wasn't sure whether he was completely out of it or not, but looks like he is. Got the helmet off, and, and that's a tough day. I know, Mike, you caught up with him earlier. Really had a lot of positivity and, and good momentum coming into the weekend. Yeah, you know, he's talking about um, just really trying to figure out where he fits in right now and in what is his official, I guess, rookie season for the XC1. And uh, he's like, I've had some highs, I've had some lows. Today's going to be one of those lows. But, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I think good things for Lyndon Snodgrass as he's moving into the future. Seems to be doing the right things. Just got to put it all together. Well, and it actually brings up a good point. Now, I'm, I'm completely speculating here. Don't know what happened, whether it was a problem with him or the machine. But this course with the rocks and everything like that, it is brutal on the machines. I know uh, Caleb Wood, one of our youth riders earlier, he did the last lap with one foot peg. It completely ripped the foot peg off after slamming into a rock. And so this is just, just as much about making sure your machine makes it to the finish as you do. For sure, it looked like they were working on the header pipe there. Maybe something happened with that, and if they change it, we could see Lennon get back out there. You know, he's going to be far off the pace, but just getting out there is, is more testing on the bike. You're building your fitness. You're getting more race craft. You know, instead of just missing, missing out on the whole race, you don't get the result, but you get the benefits from completing the race. So taking a look now, those guys kind of put a little space between the three of them. Looked like Stu was going to try to make a run back at Girard. Stu not wasting any time and no. you know we, we've talked about it a lot more than we want to and I'm sure more than Stu wants to hear but through four rounds of racing we still don't have a Stu Baylor win uh, ben, Ben's nodding his head right now like yeah like it's kind of shocking everybody uh, and then meanwhile Johnny Girard up to this race is at that point where he's almost got that full uh, race gap between these guys as far as the point standings are concerned is it panic button time right now if you're Stu Baylor Ben no, you know, we've seen him. We've seen him miss races early in the season and still get back in the fight. And it's a long race. And the cool thing about GNCC is it rewards you for first place a whole bunch with the points. So a few wins and he can be right back yeah. in the mix. And, and we all know Stu can win. Um, him and Johnny, honestly, they've both been super consistent. Johnny just slightly more. And he's been winning the races. So so that gap, that gap built pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. And we know when the chips are down with Stu, that's that's when he shines. He gets it's like he gets punched in the mouth and then he wakes up and then he, he smiles. Does some you punch him in the mouth things. and he smiles yes. at you. Now you know you've messed up. <laughs> For sure. And you know he's he's putting in the work. As we see Jordan coming through here at mile six, he's putting in the work. I saw he was out testing the rain, testing tires this week. So he's the type of guy that always puts in that extra effort to to make sure the bike is is set up for the race. Doing all the traveling, he'll come out early. Uh, kind of to each state and, and get comfortable on the train. And that's actually a good point that you bring up. Tire selection got to be pretty crucial out here as well. Talking to a couple different riders, some of them even going with a more gummy, almost trials type tire for the rocks and roots. Um, others, I know we talked to some of our Dunlop representatives, they're rep recommending that AT82, a little bit of hard pack, a little bit of scoop, depending on what you need. Uh, ben, as far as your situation, if you were coming into, into a race like this, what are you thinking as far as tire choice goes? It sounds like those softer ones, maybe a little more grip, but it's going to go away quick. Yeah, I saw Johnny Johnny Gerard had the Dunlop EN91 rear tire, which it's kind of more of like an enduro spec tire. It has a really tall sidewall, um, and the knobbies are a little shorter, a little more spread out. But that, that tall sidewall uh, really soaks up the rocks. It just gives you a little more cushion. You don't get that, that dead feel. Um, so I think that is the tire I would choose. It's the one I, I ran at Snowshoe last year. That's that's expert analysis that right is, there yeah. because I'm, I'm like, okay, this knobby looks a little different than this knobby. I don't really understand. <laughs> yes. so. It is comfort, though, and it depends on the rider. It depends on your riding style. If you're someone who rides with the bike straight up and down a lot, side to side, it all depends. And it looks like with Some that toast I just riders. saw, yeah, dipping into the XC1 class. So. Like we, uh, like you're seeing on your screen, Josh Toth on elapsed time there. It looked like there was a KTM right ahead of him. I can't tell if that was Grant Davis, um, but it looked like there's an XC2 rider right in front of Josh, and then Lane Michael I think was right behind them. So you can see at the top of your screen, just weaving his way through. We caught a glimpse of Jordan Ashburn, and then Gerard and Baylor going back and forth, and it looks like they're reeling in the number three. 
Yeah, it's tough to decide what to do if you're super comfortable. If I was Jordan and I was super comfortable, yeah, I'd probably be putting a charge on. But you really have to be confident in yourself to uh, be out there all by yourself for three whole hours is it's tough, man. There's a lot. When you're out there by yourself, you don't really know trying to push, and it can be difficult. Looks like trying to see whether or not that was a lapper. I believe it was pulling out of the way, and that's that's a whole so, other ball yeah. game that we haven't even gotten into. That was a, a huge tail of the tape for the WXC class. Um, that, just so many lappers, and it didn't seem like you catched them one at a time. It was a group of ten, a group of fifteen riders all at one time. Uh, we could see that shake things up as well. Maybe that's in the back of the head of your leaders as well, man. I know this is going to get really thick and uh, have a lot of riders to make our way through late in the race. It does look like they're reeling, in, reeling it up to Jordan, which he shouldn't be concerned. Uh, honestly, Jordan's one of the harder guys to pass, and like we talked about this being a local race, it's probably going to be extra hard to get by him today. Yeah, he seemed, rightfully so, very, very confident coming into today. And When I talked to him, it was kind of one of those things. I was like, man, this season is very reminiscent of your championship season where you were kind of quietly lurking back there. You're clicking off podiums or top threes you're right there in the points. And then a win, I think maybe round five. I can't remember what it was now. But nonetheless, suddenly Jordan was in the conversation. I said, we fast forward to 24. Not only are we at the round five where you started clicking them off, but – you're at home and you know there's no place like racing at home he just feels comfortable and obviously uh fans are out in droves for jordan ashburn he actually made the comment he's like mikey i've never been to a place where uh honestly i can't really get into my normal weekend race routine because so many people are stopping me wanting an autograph a picture he's like it's amazing i love it he's like but it's different for me yeah it's amazing but it does weigh on you like yeah. you said you know having your own routine having your time to look at the track to test ride your bike and then also you need some downtime you need to chill yeah. you need to kick your feet up um so yeah that's i guess there's good and bad for the situation it's always so it's it's almost funny in a way to see how dialed in you guys are for the entire weekend you know when your meals are going to be um, i heard i believe it was snodgrass saying yeah i made this meal on friday yep. i knew i was eating it at this time today i mean you guys have a routine absolutely down to a tee yeah, you just want to you want to have as little to do on the weekend as possible, you know. It's, it's best to have your gear set out and ready to go, your goggles prepped. You want all these things just – you just want the race weekends to be easy. I buy all my Snickers in advance as well <laughs> coming into the race weekend. So, yep, I'm nice and fueled up. Taking a look. There is Bollinger, like you said, uh, a good showing there yeah. uh, right off the start. And I, did I miss DeLong already? I was going to say he got a great jump off of the gate and uh, was curious to see whether or not he made some quick passes. Oh, big gap behind Bollinger. Now, I know DeLong was behind him earlier. Is this Evan Smith? Evan coming Smith. Through. Smith coming through. Should be CMX C2 guys here soon. Yeah. yeah, it should be long for sure. It's going to be Grant Davis. And you can see a little bit of wind to throw into the mix yeah. as well. You see that thing flapping around now. Uh, not sure really how much that's going to affect the riders themselves, but maybe pushing some of that dust out of the way. Let's see. Looks like that was rider Lafferty. There is Grant Baylor. And we may have missed the number I one. I'm, so. I'm not 100% sure. I hope so. Craig needs a good ride today. Yep, there's Grant Davis right there with Toth right on his heels. Lane Michael. Yep. Lane. So now taking a look back at the Yamaha Racing Live Drone to the tops of the field. It seems like the guys are starting to settle into their pace yep. now. With this type of terrain, we said the rocks, the roots. Um, you can't always be super aggressive, so may not look like they're charging but you know they're they're pushing the track as as fast as they can well and i know uh, i caught up with Stu baylor a little bit earlier and i was like all right man what, what's the game plan and he said get to him lap one and two get past them lap three there so go. he's got him in sight right now he knows he's got the pace we could see Stu baylor put it on cruise control for the next little bit and uh, start to make or start to plan for that late race strike Yeah, Stu, I think he's in a situation. Well, obviously, he needs to finish in front of Girard, if nothing else. Um, but, yeah, a win would certainly be good, as, as Ben was alluding to. Uh, he's a man that he can click him off and start really closing in on that points gap. Um, Stu needs a, a victory here today, either a moral or an overall victory, to kind of get things turned around for him. And right now, well, this is as close a racing. We've had some good ones, but 
if we get a couple more guys in this mix, this is going to look like Iron Man at the end of the season last year, where it was just a freight train of XC1 riders. As there goes Ashburn, Gerard, and Baylor in tow. And man, you can see just how whooped out and rough this course is getting. I literally stopped in my tracks. I heard the I heard Ryan Eccles say, "Guys, this one might be rougher than Camp Coker," <laughs> and it's it's got to be a whole different style of rough, though. I mean, uh, I actually saw a rider run head on into a tree because they clipped a rock earlier and just smack right into it. There's nothing that they could do, and so clearly it's given some fits out here to these riders uh, in old school GNCC course. So I'm told. I saw in the back there uh, looked like Craig DeLong is is in fourth. Okay, just uh, a few seconds off this lead pack. Oh, sorry, probably Ricky Russell in, in between them there. So possibly fifth. Ricky Russell and Craig, uh, two, two other guys that could really use a good ride here today. I think a big confidence boost for Craig if he could pull off a podium, kind of get things turned around as he has really, he's had some tough luck this season, some almost uh, sort of one-off issues that nobody's really experienced. Yeah, he just needs to get the momentum rolling. He yeah. needs a few small victories here and there that he can build off of, get some confidence up, and I'm sure we'll see him back at the front. Um, kind of a pointed question, Ben. Is there a national championship kind of hangover the next year? I wouldn't think so. Um, you know, I won the championship in 2021 and was trying to defend it there in 2022 and was doing really well until an injury. Yeah. Um, but I think I talked about it at the last race where having the number one plate should be confidence more than anything. Um, but it all depends on how you're feeling. You know, if you're gelling with your bike, if, if you're feeling good, if your body's good. Every situation is different, so sure. it's it's hard to say. But he should be proud. I mean, he earned that championship. Absolutely. So, you know, after that and not having the best few first races, you know he's he can't be happy. So oh, right. I'm yeah. sure he's doing all he can to, to get back to form. Well, and you bring up a good point. Bill Balance said the same thing yesterday. Mm -hmm. Small victories, taking the, those steps. And obviously coming into the season, the expectation was to be on the top step of the podium. But clearly had some bad luck, had some issues. So just taking those little strides forward to uh, get the momentum on his side, as you see, Looks like uh, all three of those riders stopping for hydration. Ricky Russell has closed in on those guys as yeah. well. Yeah, Ricky right there. On Stu, being cautious back there. Craig Long, fifth. Boy, let's keep it this close when we come in for pits in a lap. I'm, I'm in, I'm here for it. Let's get a battle of the pit stops. Put the put make the pit crew sweat, right? That's get it. them yeah. nervous. Get right? them put the pressure nervous. on them. Kind of the way this track's laid out too. Um, real twisty. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Big Buck, and you know a track like that makes for close racing all day. Um, I'm sure the rocks can help separate the guys a few more, a little bit more. But I'd expect to see the the racing close all day long. It's funny you bring up the rocks. Uh, Chuck Lamaster this morning, we, we always talk a little bit prior to the race day, and he said uh, he rode with Ashburn. I don't know if it was here or at least in this area somewhere, and uh, very rocky section they were going through. And normally your rider's like, follow me, do what I do. He said Jordan Ashburn looked him dead in the eyes and said, do not follow me. Do not do what I do. <laughs> it's like that is a bad man right there when he knows. Uh, no offense, Chuck. You're not going to be able to do the things I'm about to do. <laughs> yeah, he's a guy who's done some hard enduro racing yeah. and, and enjoys that. So, you know, he may not be taking the best line when he's out there practicing. He could be, could be taking something very difficult to try to improve his skills. So we take a look. There it was. One, two, three, and four. Checking in with your reigning champ, rounding out the top five. Mike Wachowski having another solid ride after a good start as well, just behind the number one. He's another guy I feel like kind of checking off some small victories. He's gotten some hole shots, run inside the top five a lot. So a uh, big building year for Mike Wachowski. Yeah, Trevor Bollinger now. But for sure, Mike Wachowski could take a while to get used to that. Uh, there you see on your screen could take a while for mike to get used to that 450 you know he's not the biggest guy out there but you know he trains hard so he's strong and kind of getting that getting that bike fitness on a 450 it's going to take some time so 
um, you know, he's been doing really well. But to hold on to that thing for, for three hours is tough. And I'm sure as the year goes on, he'll just get stronger and stronger. Now, you bring up the, the physical fitness side of it. Uh, we mentioned this is maybe a little one of the slower courses that the GNCC series is going to this year, uh, but that does not make it any easier. Obviously, GNCC is not easy, but the physicality side of it, when you're constantly hitting rocks, getting thrown in every different direction, how draining does that get after three hours? Yeah, it's tough. And a track like this, we talked about bike setup a little, but having a good bike setup where you're really not gripping the bars super hard and... Um, I guess it's it's hard to say. You know, you want to have a good bike set up. But uh, overall, I feel like most of the GNCCs, they're really similar nowadays with the quads out there. They, they push all the rocks out of the way for the most part, and um, we get a lot of dry holes. And we talked about this being a new venue. But by looking at the course, you wouldn't guess that. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like we've been coming here for years. Yeah, plenty of rocks, boulders. And it, I was going to say, it doesn't seem like it's a track that you can flow on, but every time I see Jordan Ashburn, he seems to just yeah. be very leisurely making his way through, doesn't seem to be riding over his head at all. Not and worried about those roots sticking yeah. up right there, the rocks. You can hear the fans cheering Jordan on. Craig having a day, having a good day right there in the mix in that Monster Mile with these guys. And the Monster Mile is absolutely packed right now. It is not a far walk from right where the finish line is at. So all of the fans coming out, lining the fence. And we saw some good passing in this uh, 180 that Bollinger's getting ready to go through where they kind of dip down to the next, uh, I don't know, a little ravine almost afterwards. And uh, we saw some riders knifing down underneath, making some passes. So some good opportunities down at the Monster Mile. Look at that. Just hopping up over those rocks is Jordan Ashburn. All three of them, guys. Yeah. This is a rocky little uphill here making that look way too easy. Yeah, sometimes it's easier to jump over the rocks and the holes than to ride through them. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Ricky Russell, some hard enduro experience as well, right? He, he does some of that stuff. I know, Ben, you said you thought he would excel in these kind of conditions. Yeah, for sure. He's, he's done a lot of this technical style riding for fun. And yeah, he has done some of the hard enduro races here and there um, on all sorts of different bikes. All right, we are uh, two laps into it now. Ashburn, the hometown boy, leading the way in this one. Can he turn things around and get in that championship fight? Certainly well on his way early in this one. And, of course, you've got uh, Johnny Girard in the two spot doing what he needs to do to stay ahead of Sue Baylor in the second place position as far as points are concerned. But, Sue, hard on the charge. You heard Zach Heron talk about it. He said this, the goal for Sue, he said, I want to be in the mix in the first couple. And then pass him at lap number three and bring home a win. Will that come true? All that and more. Oh, rough and rowdy. I got to get him in there. Rough and rowdy. Ricky Russell doing his thing. And Craig DeLong finally having himself a day, as is Mike Wachowski right on that rear wheel. We'll be back with more on Racer TV after this. It takes commitment. Passion. And endurance. To make something great. OnTrack School is an online private school catering to some of the top athletes in the world. We offer a flexible schedule for students that are chasing their dreams and always on the go. We are an accredited K-12 school where students can graduate with a diploma. Scan the QR code or call us to book an appointment with one of our learning coaches to discuss your students' next steps. We 
been there since the very beginning. Organizing the industry and building champions. One hundred years of defending your rights to ride into the future. Community, family, teamwork. It's what we have stood on for over a decade. Hauling might be what we do at the surface, but it's much deeper than that. Because what you need matters. When you need a haul, give us a call at 724-852-4488. For 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year, we at JD Enterprises are prepared to serve you. Progressive GNCC Racing is brought to you by Progressive. Progressive could save you hundreds of dollars on your automobile and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized e-turbo bicycles. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. A good one going on here at the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires Old Gray GNCC and our very own Jackson Burrell standing by at the Old Gray Barn. Yeah, thanks, Mikey. I am down here at the barn, a very cool and unique section here at the Old Gray. You can see the riders making their way through. We've got two main lines right here, guys, and they are getting super beat up. They're getting super deep. We were seeing a lot of flat ground here yesterday. That is not the case here today. And once the riders make their way through the barn and across the little bitty flat section they have, they go into a double line into the woods. They have two lines they can pick from. Yesterday, we saw riders go into the inside line. Now we're seeing them go to the outside of that section, and they're having to jump across a little ditch. As we saw Stu Baylor earlier jumping across the entire thing, it is a lot bigger than it looks, guys. It is at least a bike link, maybe a bike link and a half long. It is looking gnarly down here on the ground. We'll go ahead and throw it back up to you guys. Ooh, some, some different line choices there from the two-wheel side of things. I like it. There you go. Thank you, Jackson, for that. And, uh, boy, technical section. And when you talk about technical sections, you can't help but mention uh, a guy like Josh Toth and the things that we have seen him do on a motorcycle. I always have this memory of him coursing his way through Howard's Hole at Snowshoe, a very technical section. Uh, but Toth, and obviously making him making some history this year with Josh Toth taking an overall win, and we had a chance to catch up with him prior to today. Day's race. Yeah, yeah. My plan is just uh, race dirt bikes, do do everything, um, mixing disciplines, motocross, hard enduro, uh, national enduro series is my my main focus, and then yeah, everything outside of that, some GNCC. It's just uh, yeah, like to mix it up. I enjoy racing a dirt bike and uh, all the different places it can take you. So while I'm in my prime, I I'd like to go out and enjoy and um, explore these avenues of racing, it's, it's been really enjoyable. As you see is uh, where, where all the top guys are at. Um, this, is, this is the premier cross country series in the, in the U.S. and you can see all, all, the, all our best guys are the best in the country so I have to come here and uh, show up and, and see where I stack up just uh, for myself more than anyone and just know that I, I can still hang with these guys and um, yeah, I, don't, I can't say I in, enjoy, enjoyed uh, GNCC racing full time at some points, but now coming back and uh, having a different, different perspective at it, it's been, it's been really cool and I, I enjoyed the racing so far. You, you really can't fake it for three hours, uh, your speed or fitness, you can do it for a short burst, but no one can come here and just uh, fake it for that long, so it, it's a true test of man a machine you know just how long you can hang it out there and push yourself and without pushing the bike too far or, and uh yeah it's a true test so it's uh it's cool to see you come back and see where i stack up I love that interview. I love the feature, by the way. Good job, Ian Howes and, and Toth on that one. Uh, interesting perspective there. He said, hey, I didn't always really enjoy racing GNCC full-time, but it's strenuous. I mean, to, to be conditioned and ready to go out three hours pretty much every other weekend, um, 
I will say from my perspective, Josh Toth is smiling again, and I don't think I've seen him having that much fun on a dirt bike since he and you back in the XC2 days battling weekend after weekend. Yeah, it can be a grind, but three-hour races, it's a battle of attrition as much as speed and bike skill. Um, and, you know, maybe those last few years when he was riding for KTM and, and doing GNCC full-time. <laughs> yeah, oh, Stu Baylor here in second, right on the rear wheel of Jordan Ashburn. Gerard still, still there. Third. Ricky Russell in fourth. I tell you what I like that Toad said. He said the best guys are here at GNCC. I have to come here yeah. for me because yeah. I want to know where I'm at That's compared it. to all the best guys. I'm not doing this for anybody else. I just want to know where I'm at with these guys. And uh, clearly, as he's shown, he's still got what it takes. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to prove himself. And the program he's doing, racing everything, man, that just makes you such a well-rounded rider. So when you can show up to all these different disciplines and do well, it, it shows that. You know, you're an impressive guy on a dirt bike. There's no doubt. I want to see him do some flat track like Sipes did back in the day out of Buffalo Chip. And Sipes did well there. I'm just throwing that out there. Toth, add that to the schedule. He's probably got something else going on. Not I'm sure if he could cool. get a bike, he'd be out there. <laughs> All right. We're putting the word out. If you guys are watching a racer TV, you got a flat track bike. We got a guy for you. Good battle out in front. Jordan Ashburn leading the way, but lurking is the big Stu Baylor. That 514 machine. And hanging with him is Johnny Girard. I think if you're Girard in this position, um, you, you probably still feel pretty good. Like, obviously, you want to finish in front of both of those guys in front of you. But nonetheless, are you comfortable back there right now in that three spot with the kind of points lead you have? There's no reason to push it, no reason to panic? He should be, and especially since he could still see Jordan, who is who's leading. You know, if you can see the leader, you're still in a really good spot especially this early in the race. Let them do the hard work. Starting to get into lappers now. Let Jordan deal with that stress. And as long as Johnny stays close enough, hopefully when the, the lappers pull out of the way, he could, he could sneak by at the same time. I'm pretty impressed. We've seen four or five riders yeah. just fully get out of the way, stop another. their race. Great job and uh, good awareness from our lap riders, which if you're not aware, they'll let you know in a hurry. It's a yes, lot of, they will. A lot, of, a lot of please and thank yous, right, man? That's <laughs> what you guys it. are saying. Beep, beep. It depends. It depends how focused you are. And, you know, if you are nice to the guys, hopefully they remember that and, and they'll be quick to get out of the way for you next round. But, hey, sometimes you don't want to waste that breath. It can True. be tiring. We're in spectator mode, full-blown right now, waiting to, waiting on uh, Stu to make a move, and there it is. Wow, look at that. It's like he did get it done. Yep. Jordan was trying to fight him. Might have rubbed some paint, but got it done. I saw that. We could see that coming just with yep. how aggressive Stu was, and he was right there just waiting for a moment. Ooh, and there he goes. Mama, there goes that man, Stu Baylor, now going to try and put a gap on him, and I don't think Stu's going to be friendly around any lap traffic right now. He is certainly letting them know. Stu's wanted to be in this position all season long. He finds himself here right now. Jordan's got a rebound and strike back quickly, I think. Well, and I know Stu said his plan was to make the pass uh, on, on lap three, but I just think his pace overall was a little bit quicker than Ashburn. He was getting pressure from Johnny Gerard as well. Whether he wanted the spot or not, I think Stu had to make that happen. Yeah, so Jordan now needs to remount and, and stay with Stu, um, try to make that pass. But for someone like Johnny, now that Stu's out front and worked his way through the pack and seems to have the fastest pace, Johnny really should focus on trying to get by Jordan as quick as possible and stay on that rear wheel of Stu so that he doesn't slowly inch away. And just like you said, Mikey, Stu's hit the ground running. He got around him and almost immediately put a couple bike links between them. Be very curious to see what the rest of this lap looks like, whether it's a, a sprint pace. And they've actually kind of stretched it out a little bit over Gerard as well. Stu also, you know, he worked through the pack, so he may have some sneaky lines out there. So if Jordan can stay close and if uh, Stu still takes those lines, he can learn from him. And maybe that'll be the time that he needs. Um, to stay right on his rear wheel. It might not be that Jordan's going any slower. It could just be line selection. Should have uh, pit stops, I imagine, coming up next time around as well. These guys just tight, so we're gonna, we might get what we wish for. Some heated competition in pit row. Better cue up the NASCAR sound. That's get it. ready. See if Stu's waving his arms, yelling something. He's always yelling something, he good is. or bad. He's going to be yelling, but nonetheless, we'll see how it goes for sure. Was it Florida? We were talking to him on Friday before, and he's like, 
talking with his mechanic at the same time, and he said, don't worry about what I, he's like, I'm just popping off. Don't worry about me. Just stick to your job. I just, it's basically, I think it's a therapy session for Stu in the pits. Yeah, it's entertaining. I, I've even had that. Yeah. Sometimes you yell, and, and it'll tell you what you said, and you're like, oh, I don't even remember. I don't remember that. I was blacked out. Things continue to unfold out front. New leader, Stu Baylor, the 514. Ashburn in the two spot. Gerard trying to work his way around Ashburn now. Both these guys, man, they can't let Stu get away from them. I don't know that the lap traffic's going to allow Stu to get away from these guys. Well, I tell you what it might allow him to do, though. If he gets 10 to 15 lap riders between them, True. it does give that little bit of buffer time. Because, yeah. I mean, it's like we heard yesterday. You can catch the lappers at the wrong time. And so the more riders he's able to get between them, and he's going to have plenty to put between them if he can, uh, the more unlikely it is that they're able to slice their way through and sneak up on the back of them. Yeah, it looked like just now um, Jordan was able to use those lappers to its advantage. They slowed Stu up just enough to where he could get right on the rear wheel of them. A little sense of urgency right there at Girard. I think he wants to be right up there with those guys to both of your point because when they get into that lap traffic, you don't want to be that guy that gets multiple lappers in between you. Well, and again, it doesn't look like Gerard's riding over his head. Uh, sounds like from race control, we're going to have a six-lap race on our hands. So now, sounds like we know how things are going to shape out lap-wise. Team's probably figuring out pit strategy, and uh, we'll see how that shakes up throughout this. But yeah, to your point, Gerard doesn't seem to be in a panic as, as he's actually reeled back in on that lead group and uh, might be biding his time, taking a little bit of Stu's mess and saying, hey, hang on, we're, we're just uh, about a third, just over a third of the way into this race. No reason to panic. I've still got you in sight. Taking a look now. Yeah, Stu's got the elbows out. He's riding he's riding the wide line and he is coming through in a hurry. Now, if you're somebody like Stu, Ben, you mentioned maybe having some hotlines. Uh, you, it amazes us how much you guys are thinking while you're out there. We're like, they're busy enough racing. They can't be <laughs> thinking about this, that. You're doing arithmetic. You're doing all kinds of things in your head. If you know, hey, I've got somebody like Johnny Girard behind me that can see what I'm doing, you think he doesn't take that line for the lap unless he needs it? It depends because say he doesn't take it and, and Johnny sees it anyways. Um, he could use that to pass him. So at this point, he's probably going to stick with the lines that he's taking, the fast ones. Um, he knows as long as he runs this pace that he's running, it's going to be hard for them to pass him. So he should just stick with what he knows. And you can see just how, when you start seeing the feet come off the pegs for yeah. these top guys, you know it is getting real tight and slowed down significantly. Nobody's able to get away from anybody right now. This is some old school GNCC right here. Yeah, it looks pretty tight and twisty. Lots of turns, not many straightaways. And this is where the flow, having a flow can be hard to find. And uh, parts of the track like this are, are really tiring, honestly, when you're charging in the corner, breaking hard, charging out of the corner um, just constantly. Well, we saw like Stu put a good sprint pace in. Hey, let me get a little breathing room in. Maybe I can find my flow. But then as these lap riders start coming in, big groups of them, oh, I got to check up. Hold on. Now I got to sprint again because they were able to catch up. So it's like they never really get the opportunity to settle into what their pace really wants to be. Stu around some more lap traffic right there. Gerard around. Or excuse me, Ashburn and Gerard. And I keep looking at the bottom of the screen. I think I've caught a glimpse of Ricky Russell. Let's see if we can see him come around here. I believe that might have been a lap rider on a Yamaha, so I'm not 100% yeah. sure. Ooh, flirting with it a little bit right there. Well, and if you remember, I want to say it was Camp Coker where Stu had some choice words for the lap riders as well. Yes. So uh, maybe all niceness has gone out the window. Okay? <laughs> it could be. Ben was talking about the lappers remembering you. Maybe Stu remembers the lappers, honestly. Could be. Hey, I remember you from last race, and I'm Recognize definitely nice. that gear. Exactly. That poor unfortunate soul. Yes. <laughs> that would be a bad, bad day for that rider. Our three riders out in front continue to keep pace. Small gaps right here in what we'll call the biggest open section, <laughs> which isn't much. A 
And then right there, again, like you guys were saying, checking up, having to break through these technical sections. So there you see your leader on screen here at the seven mile marker. Jordan Ashburn and Johnny Girard, not far behind at all. Got a little bit of clean track in front of them for that next section. And we'll hold here, try to see. So it is still it Ricky is Russell Ricky. in the fourth place spot. I believe last time we saw it was that man right there, Craig there DeLong, is. still holds down the top five position. So not too much shake up. And, and again, shout out Wachowski, keeping him right there in sight. Curious to see how far our XC2 leaders have worked up into the XC1 pack. Stu still coursing his way through as Ashburn continues to keep pace. It's like a, it's like a chess match at this point. It's yeah, I feel like we're going to see it spread out a little bit and then bunch back up depending on where they are at the track and then also when they get into those lappers. Something like this, you know, they're not wheel to wheel, but they might as well be. They're kind of, it's not like Jordan's close enough to make a pass if Stu makes a mistake, same as Johnny on Jordan, but they're right with each other. They can see each other, like we said, early in the race, coming into some pit stops, you know, they're settling into their pace. Still plenty of time. Did we lose? Oh, no, there he is. Okay, I thought we lost Gerard. He's still with him. Just out of shot, but a small gap back between second and third. Maybe a little mistake, a little hiccup. We talked about tire selection as well. Um, so if these guys have different tires, there could be different parts of the track uh, that work for them, you know, Stu, Jordan, John, Johnny. Um, someone might have chose a tire that's better in the rocks, whereas someone might have chose the more all-around tire, which will be better in the loamy stuff or better in the hard pack. So that could be a reason why why we see the, the lead um, stretching out in certain places and getting closer in others. Top three coursing their way through the woods down here in Tennessee. A new track for us here in 2024. Some old school GNCC. We had an old school GNCC-er with us yesterday with Bill Balance. Pretty cool, interesting perspective from him. Um, almost kind of, we didn't do that on purpose, having the old school guy add an old school GNCC, but it was almost like, I don't know, uh, the universe aligning to have Bill Balance in here getting his perspective and talking about the difference. And it's kind of, I, I was put in perspective for him as we watched Stu come through mile marker number eight with uh, Ashburn and Gerard in tow. That was, that jump there. Yep. yep. That was the one Jackson was talking about right there. But it kind of put it in perspective for me when I spoke with Lyndon Snodgrass of, oh, all Snodgrass is going to remember is what we would call now traditional GNCC with big open sections, much larger than what we see right there. Uh, that's been the norm for, what, probably the last 10 plus years. Yeah, it seems like at this venue, there's really not much, not much open field. Yeah. Majority of it is in the woods. We saw Stu there jump in that little ditch. Something like that, you save time, but also energy. So if you can get creative like that, it makes a big difference. That's something the riders out there need to be looking for as, as the track breaks down. You get the little break and bumps building up, something that you can use as a little bit of a lift. Well, and I'm not 100% sure, but I believe the previous lap, Ashburn didn't take that line. I think he ducked to the uh. inside. And so maybe, like you said, you guys always taking notes, watching the riders in front of you, seeing what they're doing. And uh, we saw Ashburn followed him right off and over here on this lap. So another rare moment we see him out of the woods. Just another point. It's it's head-to-head -head racing, but sometimes you need to be more concerned about the track, just trying to race the track to the best of your ability. Not always just trying to beat the guy that's that's ahead of you. Stu coming into the auxiliary pro pits there. And now maybe we get to see that battle. Let's see what happens when they get into our pro pits between Baylor, Ashburn, and Girard. And it's funny, you can see the different color of soil there where there's still moisture. Uh, Stu going through some of that grassy or loamier type soil kicking up. Still got a little bit of moisture left in it from uh, the midweek showers. And then 
having a wow, slow up a ton right there in that one section. And here they go, getting ready to go through the pits. Let's see what happens. Looks like Stu bypassed his pit, went a little slow. Looked like he was looking over there, but cruised right on by. Jordan Ashburn, Ashburn stopping. Ashburn's in. Did he get, okay, he did, he got goggles. So no pit by Stu. No pit by Stu. Interesting. We did not Let's see. Let's hope that was the plan. Yeah. Like you said, you saw him look over. No pit by Gerard as well. All right. So now it's going to be Baylor, Gerard, Ashburn. Ashburn after a pit stop. There's DeLong. So DeLong will take new goggles, some fuel, a little hydration. Let's see if uh, Jordan Ashburn's pit crew can, can give him a pit board saying that. Uh, the two guys ahead of him, Stu and Johnny, didn't pit. You know, if he can charge up and get on their rear wheel by the end of this lap, he'll get two free passes while they stop for gas. That's it. Well, BOGO action for Ashburn. Just got to get back up there and hang with him. And he, boy, has been sensational in this track so far. No reason why he can't get back up there in the fight with those guys. Maybe Looked like happen. that was possibly Johnny Gerard. Yeah, behind, I think Ashburn has already really? passed Gerard. Yeah, I thought the same thing. That was We're definitely. positive Gerard didn't take fuel at him. Okay, okay. All right, sounds like Gerard but did not pit, so I guess we'll wait to see. Did we lose that Ricky Russell? DeLong and uh, Wachowski goes Wachowski. by. Well, we'll know soon. So Stu has already come through the finish line. There's Jordan Ashburn. There was Johnny Gerard. Coming across the line, so Ashburn has made the pass back around Johnny I'd Gerard. Wow. I'd assume Johnny either pit or he could have had an issue, you know, could have had a little crash, something like that. Yeah, so Baylor checks in. Uh, 15 seconds is the gap back to Jordan Ashburn. Now looks There's like Craig. DeLong will take over the fourth place spot with Wachowski right behind him. So something happened to the 212 of Russell. Yeah, Gerard six seconds back from Ashburn. We'll stay here at the finish line to see what happened to the Ampro Yamaha. He was in a great spot. As far as the uh, the pit strategies go, Ben, is uh, how much of that is a rider decision versus a team decision? Obviously, you guys do a lot of talking beforehand, a lot of strategizing. What if this happens? What if that happens? But when it's actually race time, are you aware of the pit strategy the team is planning, or is it kind of you're getting signals, you know, a mile or two ahead, saying, "Hey, we are stopping this lap." Usually, they'll have a game plan before the race, but then also they'll tell you on the pit board. And and for me, I just say. Hey, when I go by the pit, if I see you out there standing with the gas can, I'll pull over. There you go. Fair enough. So Keep for it the simple. most part, I leave it up to the team. They uh, they have it down to a science. You know, they measure they measure fuel consumption, all that type of stuff. I know Stu's the type of guy who he likes to play around with that, likes to pit on alternate laps and, and try to take advantage of that. But we saw um, we saw Jordan stop. We also saw Craig DeLong stop. You know, both Austrian brands, the same as KTM. Usually they do the same thing. So I honestly would be surprised if Johnny didn't pit. Man, look at that. You want to yes. talk about feeling the flow. He's flowing, standing up on the pegs. Fans going wild, it sounds like, for Stu Baylor. I'm sure they're going to be going wild for this as well. Jordan Ashburn strategically makes his way around. Not too far behind. And, yeah, Stu's one of those guys. He has probably some of the most fans out there. All three of those guys staying 100% on the pegs all the way back around that. The track is rough using the suspension and also their legs is a little extra suspension to soak up the bumps. Oh boy. Mm. Look out kids. Good luck folks. <laughs> Stu Baylor, boy, making that look real easy. When I tell you who's probably looking at this going, I wish it was that easy, was Bryson Neal and Walker Fowler. <laughs> right. Because there was one line they yeah. could take yesterday, whether it was a lapper in front of you or not. Jordan looking really good here in a second. Little, little few hop. kicks here and there, but hey, to be expected. There goes Jabbar. And man, I uh, the battle is on between DeLong and Wachowski. They were mm -hmm. wheel to wheel, just about less than a bike length apart. So 
you're seeing DeLong on screen here. There's Wachowski in chase. Good for Mike to be following Craig. Yeah, absolutely. The Talk about uh, pulling out the, the pen and paper, taking some notes. All right, we're going to take a short commercial break, but first, let's recap a little bit. How about it? New leader, 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 the 514 of Sue Baylor back there behind Ashburn says, no more. Uh, makes the pass, gets around Ashburn, and boy, he tried to check out to Laterville, but boy, the lap traffic playing a big factor here today. Has to check up, so Ashburn able to stay on his heels, and then pit strategy coming into play. No pit for Stu Baylor. We know he's going to have to pit next time around. Ashburn, can he hang in there? Get back, make a pass. Gerard still in the mix as well. But right now, the man in charge is the 514. Stu Baylor will be right back. I'm Stu Baylor, and you're watching GNCC Live on RacerTV.com. bike out like this all my stress is just melt away i hear that this bad boy can fix anything yeah tough day at work nice cruise to sort you right out when i'm riding i'm not even thinking about my painful cavity oh you shouldn't ignore that and every time i get stressed about having to pay my bills i just hop on the bike man oh come on man you gotta pay your bills you don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by america's number one motorcycle insurer well you definitely do those things aren't related so ah yeah whoa that is a vibrating pain believes they've invented the best way. With age comes wisdom. We've come to realize that every piece of knowledge is learned, passed down from those generous and patient enough to teach. Legacy, it's not about leaving something behind to be remembered by. It's realizing that the future lies within the next generation. Let's call it a night, all right. The nature of true progress is humbly building something bigger than yourself. Rocky Mountain ATV MC, this is our legacy. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. Mikey Wayne's here. I'm five foot two. These guys are both six foot ten. That's not true at all. But hey, welcome back to racing. We've got a great one going on right now. Our leader, Stu Baylor, out in front, the 514. Uh, hey, we did one of these rig tours a couple of weeks back. It was really, really cool. We had a chance to do that with the Rocky Mountain ATV Red Bear Kawasaki rig. Here you go. Take a look at what Stu and the boys have got in the pits. Hey guys, how's it going? Stuart Baylor sitting here in, the, in front of the Rocky Mountain Racing Red Bear Rig. Getting ready for a weekend of racing ahead and I'm going to take you guys on a quick tour of what we got behind us. Just finished up the race steed for the weekend. Just got to throw a shock on. It's the last thing. HBD always keeps the, keeps the bike looking cool and one of the unique things that we get to do with the, with the mirror graphics this weekend. It's, it's awesome. So. Over here we got our number one plates, um, Caleb Wood from the Super Mini class and uh, Rachel Archer, obviously we know who she is, so Caleb's doing a little bit of motocross this year as well, GNCCs, 
qualified to go to Loretta's again. So uh, just a, just a, a good story and part of the family as well. Uh, he's a, he's first cousin, so and partners with the Shoals and Max. So hopefully he'll be able to fill my shoes one day. Now on to the semi. That's what they say where the magic happens. So we all got our little cubbies. I got to keep my monster bottles, but I don't actually need these because I drink these. Four arms strong. We did some cool things this year. A lot of times the riders are out on the track when the kids come by, so we did some signature stickers and team stickers. Got our posters out there. Got our parts in for the year. So keep all of our goodies here in the semi. Back here is kind of the the food stations, obviously we like to eat around here, so we had the Pit Boss Grill set out there. We've got the Blackstone out back, so back here, like, just reserved to eat. Yeah, like 50% of the rig's about food. The rest of it is, is parts, like, and then the necessary part is actually the food. So up front, it's a little bit messy right now. Um, we just got a bunch of gear in. Looks like I finally got a new monster helmet, too. Fresh lid. Every time. She got the crash out of it. I know, some people look at that wrong. I'm actually going to throw it against the side later. Up here, we call, we call it the, the casting room. I, 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 we all check just in case. But More clothes. This is, this is probably where the magic should happen, but it's just a wraparound couch that is currently uh, piled with clothes. Bathroom in here. Big X out of order so nobody comes and blows this thing up. Oh, there's another black stall. Remember, cooking from here back. So, pretty much up here where we keep all of our spare stuff. Got a couple spare bikes in the, in the back over there. Tires, basically just different options for every race through the year. Spare engine, which I need to bring down because uh, this is one of the ones that we got to send off. That over revved it, I'm blaming on him. So, while I'm up here, I remembered I didn't have my boots downstairs. Gotta make sure I got a left and a right. That'd be a good start. And that's what we got here with the rig tour. The Rocky Mountain Red Bear racing rig. Hopefully uh, the guys will keep working and we'll be ready for another good weekend. All right, did you guys die inside a little bit when he dropped the helmet? Yeah, I cringed just, cringed just a, little a little bit. bit. Yep. I do the same thing, but there it is. maybe a little more gingerly, I make sure to drop <laughs> it on some grass. That works. But I guess, yeah, one little superstition maybe a lot of the riders have. That's true. You got any others, Ben? Are you like a, a right glove first or anything like that? No, I'm really not. Looks like Stu's out here. Got a little bit of a gap on the rest of the field, but no, nah, I mean, the more superstitions you have, just, I don't know, the more you're in your head, the more, things the more stressful head, yep. things become, you know. It. Man, look at this. The gap has opened up significantly. It's, yeah, very large gap. And looks like Johnny G now in Ooh, second there. we yep. lose? Let's wait and see if we can see Jordan. So Gerard check in. I see Barry one Hawk, of the coastals. Right. So, yep, right there. there Not far off at all. He said, push, 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 push. So now, Stu, with a little bit of breathing room. Gerard in the two spot. I'm going to think maybe probably a mistake by Ashburn with that gap because he had a little gap on uh, Gerard prior to this. Let's remember, too, Stu didn't in pit. So. Correct. Yep. Things may close back up. See if Stu gets a pretty flawless pit stop in here. See what happens. Watching on the Yamaha Racing Live drone here for round number five, the old gray GNCC, a new facility for us. Stu Baylor, if you're just tuning in, um, boy, had to work for this lead. And once he's gotten it, really has not looked back. Had some good fights in there with Ashburn and Gerard. Uh, but I believe probably a mistake by Ashburn's got him back a little bit. 
and uh, Baylor with some breathing room. But as you heard Ben Kelly mentioning, uh, Stu Baylor will have to check in for a pit stop. No way he can go another lap without some fuel. So uh, we'll see if he can retain that lead once he get into there. Got quite a bit yet before we get to that point. But nonetheless, uh, this is the ride that Stu Baylor has needed as Johnny Gallagher joins us in the booth and hey Johnny 514 out in front he needs it yeah you know we uh, we've been kind of goading him the last couple races and and pointing out you know we did not expect to be four rounds deep into this now nearing the completion of round number five or at least halfway through and uh, just not having a win yet but no better way to get close to doing that than get out front he's looking comfortable obviously we talked about it earlier in the show everybody saw what happened there in the first couple turns on the ground making contact and the Baylor boys basically last and second last going to the woods but Stu uh, able to charge up put in the fight get to the front and he's uh, putting on a clinic right now so uh, Zach Heron actually stepped out we've seen uh, Ricky Russell depart the race and uh, he is in at the Yamaha Ampro semi there and I believe Zach is going to go down and get a word with him to find out exactly what the issue is uh, he appears to be okay in that he's walking around but I, he is not rejoining the race oh, that's, that is a bummer uh, Ricky was having a good ride good ride here today so unfortunate for him. So Russell out, Snodgrass out, at least last we saw. I think that was it for him on the day for that Babbitts Online Monster Energy Kawasaki team. So the old gray claiming a couple of our riders, but right now life is good if you are Stu Baylor out in front coursing through this very technical GNCC. Yeah, old school. I mean, it's been talked about so much uh, throughout the course of the weekend. If you guys have been following along on Razor TV, this is really a throwback to the way GNCC was kind of when it got started. Uh, more single track, tighter trails, rocks, roots, uh, you know, just gnarly terrain. And these guys are, you know, kind of tested with different terrain. You know, Ben, I've been listening to you. You've been doing a great job. And, you know, I, I don't know if it has been mentioned. I haven't listened through the entire show. But how would you liken this to kind of some of the uh, terrain you guys experience up in the New England States? I mean, is it, any, it comparable at all or? I haven't looked at much of the track, honestly, but I did talk to Johnny. Uh, Gerard, before the race, he said the first part, maybe the first five miles, he said reminds him of a natural race, which is our local hair scramble series up there in New England. Um, you know, we have all these roots, these rocks. The soil may be slightly different, and kind of having the quads, that's something we don't grow up with. So the tracks do break, break down differently, but rocks and roots are rocks and roots. So I'm sure this is going to fit into the New England riders um, but nowadays kind of doing all the traveling you know these top guys they're good at every type of train yeah you know and that's one of those things I, I did uh, Zach it sounded like you might have been trying to come in there are you down there no. All right. I thought we had uh, Zach possibly trying to come in. I think we're going to see if we can get a camera shot with him as well. But, you know, the terrain here very different than kind of the way that GNCC has transitioned. We haven't raced in Tennessee in a couple years. Uh, you know, we had obviously the Redlands, which was a little bit different from this going back. Uh, before that, we did have another race in uh, I believe it was Sparta, Tennessee, if I remember correctly. It was not too far from here. Uh, and But each section of the country, each section of each state has kind of its own terrain. And, you know, you said the first five miles or so reminded him of a net trip, but then you go into another section that's faster, different kind of dirt. Uh, these guys need to be able to adapt and, and ride everything. But Stu Baylor's a guy coming up through. I mean, in the youth ranks, they were more of these tight technical trails and obviously a multi-time national enduro champ, so kind of used to that uh, tighter, maybe not quite as chewed up, like we've already had, what, four? Or five races throughout this weekend already kind of chewing up the track but uh, still he's putting on his skills on display and uh, starting to march away a little bit with this one yeah I know Stu's the type of guy that he always mentions how he prefers the old school style GNCC tracks he wants the tough stuff he doesn't want it to just be wide open he wants he wants to be able to use his brain he wants um, difficult parts of the sections whether it's mud holes hills rock gardens somewhere where you have the opportunity to take a different line and make a pass. Um, and yeah, have to use your brain, use your, I guess, the wisdom you get from racing for years on end. Here we go on screen. There is Craig DeLong there at the six mile marker with pressure from behind from the 282 of Whitekowski. These guys were one and two off the starter, two and one as they run right now. Uh, now running a little bit further back with Wachowski in the number five spot and DeLong in the number four spot. So both of these guys battling just off the podium and still fighting, trying to clamber their way up, potentially get a shot at a podium position here today. Uh, you know, you mentioned Stu Baylor talking about wanting to be able to use his race IQ. I think that was on display round or lap number one. I mean, to start from the back like that and come up and 
be challenging within a podium position and, and put pressure on Johnny there for second, even near the end of the first lap coming into scoring before he had that little bobble and lost his spot. I mean, obviously a lot of passes made and must have had some lines picked out. Probably put his time in out there cycling and, and checking things out and making sure he had it all dialed for lap one. Yeah, he always does. That's what's interesting about a new venue. You know, when you show up to races at certain locations where you've been year after year, I guess the main line, um, I guess those little secret lines you find throughout the race becomes the main line uh, the following year. So somewhere like this that's a new track, you have the opportunity where these little insides, sometimes even outside lines that can be faster. I'm sure there were tons out there, and I'm sure he was just aggressive. You know, sometimes on the first lap, the guys are kind of in a freight train, and Stu making it up to third. From last to third, he definitely was not. And you pointed out, I mean, very, very fired up and animated there as he was kind of picking himself up and getting going. So sometimes that little heart rate spike, little adrenaline can kind of get you going when everybody else is just trying to find their race legs and you're at full sprint speed already. But the interesting point, though, like you pointed out, new track, no, obviously uh, there had been some riding done here but never held any races. So those lines that developed throughout the weekend, throughout the different races, you know, kind of had to be made this weekend. And uh, we actually heard it uh, in the post-race interview yesterday after our one PM pro race, Josh Merritt finishing there in that third place position, talking about, hey, I didn't mean to let Walker by. The line he took, I never even saw it. Those guys do go out there. They pre-ride the course, obviously, but you know, a guy like Josh, he's more in his era. It's kind of been going to the same tracks. You kind of know what to look for. It's rare that we get to go to a new facility like this, and you know, Walker being a little bit older, most likely kind of took the extra time, checked it out, and said, hey, here's a line. I think this is going to hold up, and I remember uh, going way back, some of the guys, Bill Balance, uh, eight-time GNCC ATV champion, and talking about, hey, we're not even going to walk through this line because we don't want to disturb the, you know, the leaves to let anybody know that we were even looking at it. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to hit it here and do this. And, you know, that kind of coming back into play today. And maybe that was a part of, you know, what allowed Stu to work his way up through and, and get to the front so quickly. Yeah, I could see, I could see Stu doing something like that. Um, you know, even those little lines, you know, some guys may be breaking some branches here and there. But sometimes, like you said, you don't want to do that. You want to kind of camouflage that line and, it might not always be the best line. Um, you know, the main line might be the best, but you have this little line here that you're confident in, you've walked it, you know nothing's there that's going to kick you, and you kind of just hold on and risk it a little bit to make that pass. And I know we've talked uh, kind of at length already on the show about tire selection, but I did notice Stu going with something completely different than I think uh, quite a few of the other guys were. We saw some 82s, we saw some 81s, we even saw an EN91. I'm not familiar with what number it was that Stu was running, but it was kind of an offset staggered pattern that he had uh, with some very unique siping and, and grooving. Um, so I'm not I, I, I'm not familiar with Dunlop's full lineup, but it was, you know, we've talked a lot about the 82, the 81, the EN91, a lot of different tires that are known to hold up in the rocks, and Stu going with it, it appeared to me to be a hard terrain tire, but it was not any of the ones that we've, we've mentioned. Yeah, I should I should know being a Dunlop rider myself, but I'm not the guy that experiences with, or sorry, uh, that kind of, got Jordan Ashburn there, Johnny G, second, third. Um, I'm not the kind of guy that uses a whole bunch of different tires. I kind of stick with what I know and what I'm comfortable with. Um, but yeah, it's good to know. I know Johnny G is on the EN91, so knowing Stu is on something different is, is pretty interesting. And we talked about it earlier. He's the type of guy that likes to come out to the state and ride before the race. That way he can set up his bike kind of ideally to the terrain. And he's someone who, yeah, changes his tire kind of all the time, always messing with suspension, doing that extra credit work to, to get comfortable and it's paying off today as we see him out front with with a good gap and i'm sure he's charging he wants a big enough gap to where he can pit and still come out in the lead yeah i did not uh, actually take a look at what i didn't see what jordan was running i know he had run the en91 uh at big buck earlier this year which is hard pack track not sure what his selection of tire was here today for the rocks obviously home state boy familiar with the terrain uh i, I mentioned uh to his dad earlier i said hey you know home, hometown race for you and he said hey not hometown but close enough he said you know it, it sure is nice to have one back in tennessee it's been a few years and uh, a lot of fans here for jordan ashburn don't know if you looked around but just a ton of jordan ashburn t-shirts people out there cheering him on and and that can go a long way right now sitting there in that number two spot pressure from behind from Johnny Girard but uh, you got to wonder if maybe he's got a little something more in the tank as we're just now past the halfway point is he going to you know twist her back and try to track Stu back down he surely got the support to do it yeah let's hope because we want a close race for us calling it we want it to be exciting and 
Yeah, I watched the start and during rider introductions when they called Jordan's name, the crowd went crazy. Definitely had the loudest cheers. So, you know, he's got the crowd behind him. And this race, more than anything, he's probably going to put, put a little more effort out there and maybe risk it even a little more. Well, it sounds like Zach Heron has caught up with Ricky Russell. Zach, are you down there? Hey, guys. Yeah, I am down here with a uh, little dejected Ricky Russell, man. It was a tough day. You were having a great run, obviously offside of the track now. Take us through what happened and uh, how you're feeling. Yeah, no, it was frustrating. So, well, uh, we, had, we were running good, and the track was really fun. It really suited my style. It was rocky and gnarly and was, was liking it. Um, could see the leaders. We were just all kind of close there. You get a little gap here and there, and then you catch back up, or, or vice versa. It was kind of just playing the yo-yo game, and uh, just unfortunately landed right onto uh, my bad shoulder that I kind of hurt preseason. And it's so unfortunate because I was just getting over it, and it was feeling good. And this is actually the first race I wasn't wearing a shoulder brace. And now it's uh, I don't know. We'll find out. Hopefully nothing too serious, so we can come back to the next round. There you go, guys. Tough luck here for Ricky Russell, but he's going to try to come back strong for the next round. Definitely a disappointment there for Ricky and that Ampro Yamaha team. You know, Ricky was riding very well, and even coming into the race, I think a lot of people expected to see good things out of Ricky today. He's known to do well on the rocks and the technical terrain. Uh, being from Washington State, not exactly the same type of terrain, but technicality, uh, the throttle control definitely coming into play and, and making him one of the favorites lining up here today. Yeah, unfortunate to see. Hopefully it's nothing major. And he can get some rest and come back at the next round. Those nagging injuries, though, man, they can be frustrating because you can't you can't practice during the week like you want to. So it's hard to make progress. And, you know, that's one of those things as, as the season kind of gets deeper in, everybody's already got little things, whether they're talking about them or not. You know, you got a crash here, kind of hitting the deck there, maybe just, a, a, you know, kind of wear and tear from training. But, you know, when you have those and they start adding it up, it, it really becomes, you start looking almost towards that summer break, but a lot of these guys obviously racing multiple series, uh, you know, it's, you don't even really have the opportunity to heal. You just got to keep grinding through it. And uh, one guy that we've seen do a lot of that over the years, uh, nickname or earned the nickname All Heart early on his career. I mean, riding with broken bones and torn ligaments and everything else. We've seen him do it coming back from a uh, back and neck injury a few years ago pretty quickly, uh, you know, riding through all kinds of different adversity. And uh, it, it may have affected him adversely at the time having to come through and, and kind of losing points because of those injuries but at the same time it seems to just continue to make him tougher and tougher and uh you know allowing him to kind of continue to grow and and mold himself as a rider and on days like today where it really tests you mentally it seems like he's just firing on us oh yeah he's one of those guys he's probably one of the most mentally tough out there as we see, he just stops for his pit, nice and quick, still out in front with a yeah, good gap. Maybe a little too quick. It looked like the uh, the crew was still working on some stuff there. Don't know if they were trying to give him a hydration bottle. Looked like they barely had the goggle strap on, and he uh, he very clearly was on a mission to get out of there. He didn't even want those guys to be able to see him in the pits, and, and they're still, still not in there, so mission accomplished. Yeah, which is really smart. All right, so Stu Baylor continuing to open up the gap. Just a few more turns here, uh, a few more sections of course, and we will see the official timing and scoring splits from the transponders, and we will let you know exactly what kind of a gap it is that Stu Baylor has been able to open up. We do know it's continuing to stretch. He's been able to open up that lead over Jordan Ashburn, Johnny Gerard, Craig DeLon, Mike Wachowski, and the rest, and now he's into that final section of woods before he is going to pop out into the scoring chicanes. And, uh, yeah, just like we've been talking about, putting on a clinic, uh, never seeming to almost put a wheel wrong here these these last couple of months. Yeah, Johnny, he has been on a tear. I got to go down there to the barn and see him up close and personal. And one thing that is very noticeable, even to a naked eye, is how well Stu is able to float through this track. He seems like he is just not catching the bumps that everybody else is. And it seems like he's really got something figured out here today. And Jackson, you pointed out when they were coming through, and here is Jordan Ashburn, so still not too far behind. Uh, but we'll get the official scoring split here. And then it's the 969 of Johnny Gerard just coming into screen. Stu Baylor in the two lap card is out. Ricky Towery's got it, letting him no more truth, letting him know two more circuits around this old gray facility, and he will hit see a checkered flag waving, but he's still got to stay on the gas because the home state boy Jordan Ashburn still giving chase, not giving up on it. But uh, Jackson, you were talking or showing on screen there when we saw Stu come through, kind of had an interesting line there where he came wide, you know, squared things up at, at what yesterday was a two line split, 
today for the bikes in a lot of places two lines becomes three four five yeah exactly and Stu is choosing he could go around that big ditch he chooses to jump over it where all of most of the other riders are rolling through that Stu popping the clutch jumping over it just perfect it seems like and he is doing that all around this course not catching those ragged edges that everybody else is he seems to really be floating good similar to maybe even a Jet Lawrence or somebody the way he is popping and floating through this course yep up on the pegs and uh, staying light on his feet and uh, keeping the bike light on the track there is Craig DeLong checking in fourth and Mike Wachowski looking like he's still behind he's the trailer on that DeLong semi and uh, that is your fourth and fifth place rider still very much in it Ben looks like you've got some uh, time updates for us over there yeah so checking in now after lap four Stu Baylor has a 34 second lead over Jordan and Johnny G is seven seconds behind him so hey a 34 second lead is is pretty strong um, and with how good Stu is looking like Jackson said riding the track really well he has it dialed he's saving energy going fast at the same time it's gonna be tough for these guys um, to reel him back in so so at this point so our uh, our producer telling us 20 seconds were he was faster than uh, the riders behind him on that previous lap there on lap number four. The question is, you know, if you're Jordan Ashburn, if you're Johnny Girard, Craig DeLong, Mike Wachowski, you know, is now the time if you've got it, you're just going to go after him? Or do you think there's any chance that they're holding anything back for a last lap sprint? I mean, 34 seconds is a gap that, you know, you I wouldn't think you would want to let a rider get quite that far out if you were kind of pacing yourself. What are your thoughts on that, Ben? Yeah, it's hard to say. We with someone like Stu, at, yeah, you you don't want him to get away. Um, these guys need to be charging all they can. We always talk. You guys always talk about how the last hour is a big deal, and we're pretty much into that last hour with two two laps to go. So, I think the guys behind Stu really need to be charging to to get up to him. Um, yeah, no point in saving your energy. They just they just don't have that luxury. Unfortunately, Stu is riding too well, and he has too big of a gap already. Yeah, Jackson, you were pointing out uh, Stu coming through there with a little bit different flow, a little bit different hippity hopping like a bunny. Bobbing bunny and weaving, just jumping through the rocks. This is a good section to watch Stu in, see how that back end stays steady through the entire course. Now we'll see a glimpse of Jordan Ashburn and the rest of the game coming through. Jordan, a rider that's known, obviously, to have great technical ability, has done quite well in, like, the TKO uh, and some other hard enduro-type formats, uh, even rides a trials bike a good bit. But, yeah, to that point, whatever Stu did setup-wise and, and the way he's riding the bike, it seems like his bike is just looking very planted, getting great forward drive throughout this, uh, throughout this race course here today. And here comes Jordan Ashburn now on the big number three. And he is looking solid this time around through this section as well. Still getting bumped around quite a lot. Yeah, a few more kicks for Johnny as well, uh, for Jordan and Johnny compared to Stu. Looked, it, to me, it looked like Jordan really uh, kind of had a sense of urgency. I mean, he's been riding well, but it, you know, he was able to get around those lappers, and this might be the push that we're seeing. We'll, uh, we'll find out all of that and more. The battle continues. You'll get to see just who it is that comes out on top. Will it be Stu Baylor with his first win of 2024? Can Jordan Ashburn get a win in his home state? Will it be possibly Johnny Girard getting up there in the mix and continuing the streak? Right now, it's been the Stu Baylor show for the last couple laps. Lines like this, hopping over that ditch, keeping it exciting, and keeping the throttle absolutely twisted on that Red Bear ATV MC uh, machine. And here is Stu Baylor in, and what a quick pit stop it was. Off on his way, and he is in pursuit of his first win of 2024. Can he get it done? We'll find out all that and more when we're back to Racer TV. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related. So. Ah, yee! Oh, that is a vibrating pain.
Every generation believes they've invented the best way. With age comes wisdom. We've come to realize that every piece of knowledge is learned, passed down from those generous and patient enough to teach. Legacy. It's not about leaving something behind to be remembered by. It's realizing that the future lies within the next generation. Let's call it a night. All right. The nature of true progress is humbly building something bigger than yourself. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. This is our legacy. Whatever you drive, however you drive. Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles. So you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. All right, guys, welcome back to the old gray GNCC here on Racer TV. Taking a look now at the finish line. We're going to catch up with some of the action we saw throughout this weekend here. And we'll start things off with our specialized turbo GNCC EMTV race recap. What a weekend it was. Cypress Gorey able to pull it off once again, but he had some competitors here at this one. Mr. Ort giving him a run for his money, but Cypress able to get him back on that last lap. Tough, you, co tough conditions out there, Jackson. I mean, we had rain all day uh, Thursday. Obviously, we knew it was a challenge getting in here, just getting parked. And these guys had to go out and race in those conditions. Very slick, very slippery. But, uh, man, they all look like they were having an absolute ball out there. We did. We had a fantastic time. And you can see how much this course has shaped up over the weekend. Look at how muddy these riders are. Having a hard time even making it through the course. A lot of bicycle tires spinning out there on the course there's no doubt about that and now we're looking at dust all over the course how things have changed it's unreal those last two riders you saw that was actually your overall battle a new rider to gncc emtb racing uh ben ort i believe his name was yep. uh coming out of northeast ohio heard a lot of hype coming in and when they said he's going to give cypress gory a run i thought to myself well good luck and my did he i mean he kept him honest throughout the entire race so you can see cypress even taking a look over his shoulder there and saying man that was tough but i'm glad i pulled it out yeah cypress a good good emtb rider he is a methodical rider it seems like he waits till that last have to pull it and now we'll take a look at our Stasic race recap. Me and Mikey got the opportunity to go down and hang out with them yesterday and announce this race. There's Mikey and man it was a good time. Taking a look now at the kids going around. That little lady right there she won her class and then we had little Miss Honey out there racing as well. She was able to pull off a win as well. Seeing a lot of little ladies out there riding on the Stasic bikes and man they are fast 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 everybody's saying we want more power and they have figured out how to do it they're putting the big 36 volt batteries on them now and you can see them absolutely fine Mr. Tim Cotter handing out two Stasic bikes to two very lucky kids that were standing on the sideline and it was a great time. What started out as just kind of a fun little Saturday afternoon activity has grown into an absolute huge part of the show throughout the weekend. These kids look forward to it, and they are absolutely jazzed to get out there and show off their skills. So that was the Stasic recap of the weekend. Now we will get back to the racing on the course. 
two laps down or two laps left to go four laps complete what will be a six lap race when it's all said and done and the checkered flag waves and uh, interesting 9.8 mile track actually i don't know what the total was for the bike i did see 9.8 9.8 still okay so same course uh 9.8 mile track you know you would think that's a shorter we talked about it yesterday are we going to see a bunch of laps but only six laps really pointing out just how technical and how much it has slowed down the average speed and the pace of the riders out there having to pick their way through rocks roots and uh, really just kind of not being able to open up these big 350cc, 450cc machines. And uh, as we're looking back through, I, I'm looking down here at the 11th uh, and 12th place, or, or sorry, 11th and 13th place overall riders. That is Jason Tino and Nick DeFeo. Don't know how much you guys may have already talked about this earlier in the show, but these are 250A riders, your top amateurs up, knocking on the door of the top 10. Jason Tino, a rider out of New Jersey, uh, and Nick DeFeo, those two have been just absolutely going toe-to-toe -to -toe throughout the year and pushing each other. Well, this time they've pushed each other very up near the top 10. Here we are at the FMF PowerPoint, mile marker number four. Stu Baylor working his way through already. We'll wait, we'll watch, and we'll see just what the gap is back to the number three coastal racing gas gas of, oh, is that him there, Jordan Ashburn? Maybe a little bit longer, 34 seconds, I believe it was, at the completion of lap number four. And there is the number three machine of Jordan Ashburn. Power to the ground, off in pursuit of your leader. And look just behind him, there was the 969 machine of Gerard. So we have a battle on our hands here for that second place. Yeah, Johnny Gerard putting the pressure on, trying to get up in there, push Jordan Ashburn, trying to get up as close as they can to Stu Baylor, hoping for... Uh, an opportunity to maybe wrestle the lead back away from him, but right now, Stu Baylor is controlling this one from the front. And we've been asking who was going to be able to knock KTM off of that top spot, and it looks like Stu Baylor is on a good route to do so as we take a look back at the Yamaha Racing Live Drone. We haven't talked much about the XC2 riders either as we have Craig and Mike coming in. For so that is your still? fourth and fifth place rider. Man, it looks like uh, a great ride for Mike Wachowski. I mean, to, to be up in the top five, that this would be the first time he had ever uh, finished in the top five, both overall and in the XC1 uh, class. But he may have a top five overall at one point when he won an, an XC2 race. Don't know for certain. We'd have to check back with our statistician on that, but it definitely would be his first top five in the XC1 class. He was really strong at the last round there in Cam Coker for the first two hours. Um, um, faded a little there at the end, not sure why. But, uh, yeah, we're at the third hour now, and he's still right there on fourth place, Craig DeLong. Let's see if he can hang on. He looks good. Looks comfortable. Looks like he's really dialed in. And uh, to that point, I think we mentioned on the show a few weeks ago, three weeks ago there, uh, Chris Bach, a former GNCC race winner, said, hey, Mike Lukowski's going to do well today. Basically, Camp Coker is just like his local riding spot back in Indiana. It's, it's crazy. Indiana, you wouldn't think it, but there's a sandy spot where he rides all the time. Well, if you're watching at home, I don't think Mike Wachowski has a rock pit in his backyard in Indiana. Doing well today, so this guy really starting to get it figured out with that Phoenix Racing Honda team. Uh, they're putting it together, and he's solidly in the top five. Ben, you were pointing out that XC2 class battle still going on out there. It's been a back and forth all day between Josh Toth and Grant Davis, it looks like. Yeah, it has and checking in after lap four. Josh made his way back in front of Grant Davis, but Grant was only three seconds behind him. Liam Draper, the defending champ, was in third. Um, Thad Duvall not far behind him. Cody Barnes, Brody Johnson, Rui Barbosa, and then the points leader right now, Gus Reardon, is in eighth place. Uh, I saw on the start he crashed in the third corner, so he was way back behind, maybe struggling to work through the pack. But for the points leader, being in eighth place late in the race, that's not what he wants. Let's see if he can keep pushing and, and make his way up to, to gain some more points. Well, the only uh, see something there, Jackson? It was a lap rider pulling off for Stu Baylor on a Kawasaki. I thought it was Stu Baylor, but it was not. Stu Baylor makes his way around him with no problems. To your point there, Ben, about Angus Reardon, you know, he uh, did go down. Actually, I noticed he was motioning to the rear of his machine, pulling up on the fender, showing that it was broken, uh, wondering if maybe damage to the subframe possibly. So here is Josh on Toth. screen Josh Toad. Looks like Grant Baylor behind him. Yeah, Grant Baylor. Don't see Grant Davis in the shot yet, so maybe that three-second There second was a rider in front of Josh, but could not tell who that was. 
Uh, that looked like Grant Davis to me possibly right there. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if we get another camera shot of that, but that likely is your battle for the XC2 lead right there. But pointing out, you know, your XC2 points leader, Angus Reardon, uh, it looked like to me maybe more than a broken fender because the whole back end of the bike seemed a little wobbly and he was frantically pointing at it as he was heading into the woods off the start. I did follow him through the first couple laps there looking at his lap times. He was back in 12th place and then had an even longer lap on lap number two was all the way back to 13th. So that would beg the question, did he come in for some repairs, maybe swap some parts, or is it just kind of learning to ride a bent-up motorcycle? We don't know, but these are the things we like to find out after the race when guys come in and, you know, you could say, like, oh, lackluster, you're kind of sitting in eighth there after four laps complete, and then, you know, he may come back and say, well, you know, I did come in and have to change the subframe, or, or we don't know, but sitting back there in eighth, this is a guy that's been consistently on or near the podium throughout the entirety of the season here in 2024, and obviously carrying the uh, reverse points, or reverse plate for the points leader and uh, he's going to want to maximize his gains here today like you're saying might be eighth now but he's going to clamor for every position he can to try to maintain that points lead because the rider just behind him uh, in the points is the rider in second place sitting there and that is Grant Davis his teammate. Agreed and everyone likes to say you win the championships on your bad day so you want to salvage as many points as you can and so far this year besides from Josh uh, winning XC2 and the overall, it's been Grant and Gus kind of one, two. So when you're consistent like that, it's hard to build a gap in the championship. So um, a bad race like this for Gus is going to be really good for Grant, um, something that is going to work in his favor, but still plenty of time to go. Let's hope Gus got the bike figured out and can make up a, make a push and, and try to get a little closer to the front. There you go, trying to get as many points as he can today. Trying to get max points is that guy right there. It is the 514 of Stu Baylor out front, continuing with that gap. Ooh, is that Jordan? It has, that Jordan. seems to be a little less than 34 seconds to me. Uh, we'll have to see if our man with the eyes in the sky, our producer Adam Gordon can go back and look at the race time and see exactly what the gap is back. They're calculating it right now. Johnny Gerard lead, riding a little wheelie out of, out of the uh, out of the shot there. Johnny Gerard always having fun. Even if uh, he's not out front, he's trying to get there, but he's still going to be enjoying riding his dirt bike along the way. You can never question that about Johnny G. Yep, he's always loose. You know, he's a smooth rider, but uh, he kind of hangs around all over the bike, all over the place. You know, so 23 seconds we have uh, Jordan Ashburn behind uh, Stu Baylor. But so, so that's a significant change in that gap from 34 to 23, 11 seconds in uh, roughly, I believe that was at the six mile marker. Uh, so in, in you know just two thirds of a lap, able to chip away 11 seconds. I mean, that is a big difference there. Again, if you're a Stu Baylor fan, don't panic. A lot of lapped riders, a lot of different sections. And Stu may very possibly be into kind of that conservation cruise mode, keeping an eye on the pit, pit boards, you know, seeing if he's staying Stabilize the gap when he sees it drop down. We saw this yesterday with Bryson Neal and Walker Fowler. We've seen it so many times over. You think some guys are gaining, they're closing the gap. Next thing you know, the rider out front gets the, the word from the, the crew and says, hey, these guys are coming. Boom, picks up the pace, opens it back up. But that may not be the case. We just don't know. He's tied up in lappers here. I have to wonder if Jordan Ashburn isn't getting pushed up a little bit by Johnny Girard as he's catching up to that rear wheel of him. Yeah, if those guys could work together. Um to push each other to catch Stu, that would be great. You know, if it's if they're in a scenario where Jordan's kind of riding defensive because Johnny's trying to make a pass on him, that that could honestly hurt them. But um, yeah, if they're just uh, freight training and pushing each other, it could work in their favor, like I said, to catch Stu. Yeah, and that's one of those things, that, like you pointed out, if you get to, you know, inside lines and you're having to protect and, and block and you're trying to make block passes and you're revving and, you know, heart rates are up and you're kind of riding wild, it's easy to lose time. Guy like Stu out front, smooth, consistent, hitting his lines, hitting his marks, and just continues to open that gap. But, you know, just the pressure of knowing somebody, Jackson, like you pointed out, knowing somebody's behind you, Johnny, it, it kind of opens up your mind. Like, hey, I think I'm going as fast as I can. To, if Johnny closes up that gap, like, well, obviously we can go a little faster. And that may be the case with Jordan, just continuing to push. And we already talked about it before. A lot of home state support here for Jordan this weekend. I mean, you see a ton of Jordan Ashburn t-shirts, uh, coastal racing t-shirts. I'm actually parked down near him there. And it, 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 it honestly just looks like a compound of Ashburn fans. I mean, you got kids and adults and chairs and, and, and they're all down there cheering on their home state guy. And, and that can go a long way when you feel that kind of push from the crowd as you're coming through, especially in the late stages of the race. Agreed. A win is definitely what he wants, but a podium would be a strong finish and something he could be proud of. 
Sure, absolutely. I mean, it's one of those things you know coming into this weekend. Probably set his, his expectations pretty high, but, you know, uh, a series champion just a few years ago, obviously, uh, was our defending series champion last year, um, ending up number three, just a guy that's consistently near the top. Every race he goes to, surely looking, you know, to expect to put it on the podium and to want to get the win, uh, but at the same time, like you pointed out, when, when you put it on the box, it's never a bad day, especially in front of the home state fans. Agreed. Like we were saying last time we saw Jordan and Johnny were making up some time on Stu, but that's not surprising. Someone like Stu is managing the gap right now. We have, he's on the second to last lap. Someone like Johnny and uh, Jordan, they're gonna have to be charging. They're trying to make up the gap. So they need to charge this whole time. And someone like Stu, I said, he is managing. So even if the guys do come up closer to him, he might have a little bit of extra energy and just he's probably ensuring that he can have a really strong, solid last lap. So even if the guys do catch him, they may not be able to pass him, whereas these guys are expending a lot of energy right now and may not have quite as much in the tank for that last lap. What are you seeing right now out of Stu's riding, like watching him come through that section? Does it look like a full push sprint pace, or does it kind of look like he's just smooth and, and hitting his spots? He looks really smooth. We saw him make a little mistake and that you know, upper body adjustment bike was yeah. off to the side about skimming the trees but hey that's something that happens all the time and um something as a rider you know you might not even notice that being a mistake it's something that happens so often that you're just comfortable being being loose but uh now Stu, we talked about it earlier Stu has this track dialed he's he's flowing really good he's standing up a lot feet on the pegs he's rounding the ruts jumping the bumps jumping the little ditches saving energy going fast um, seems We talked about his bike setup. The bike seems to be flowing really well. It seems like maybe this is just one of those days where he hit his mark, he's feeling good, riding strong, obviously motivated. And as he's getting those uh, pit boards and, and the split times, letting him know what kind of gap it is that he has on the riders behind him, you have to wonder, and, and I'll go ahead and speculate, I mean, Stu's a guy that has always been known for his blazing speed, but at times it was almost like a question, is he doing too much? You know, where it, he would maybe take some risks that were a little, question, not questionable, but, you know, didn't always pay off in the end. But I think what we've seen in the last couple of years, and Stu has, himself has said this multiple times on our, oh, Stu, Stu down. down. That's... <laughs> Not a huge time loss there, but looked like he kind of shoved it into that rut, maybe lost the front end a little bit, stalled the machine, and had to get it fired up. But, you know, it it seems like he's talked about, I don't know how many more opportunities I have to try to win this championship. I'm getting later in my years. If I don't get it done this year, I don't know if I'm going to have another chance. We've heard that for the last couple of years. But it seems like he's learning from all of these uh, little mistakes that he makes and, and getting better and better and making it harder on the competition to continue to beat him. Our producer, uh, Adam Gordon, saying they kind of look back. That looked like he gave up about six seconds. So what was a 23-second gap down from 34 uh, possibly may have dropped as many as five or six more seconds. And that's one of those things we talk about right there. You know, it can take four, five, six miles to gain a five-second advantage, but it only takes about a bike length to lose it. One little mistake, and you can just give those seconds away so quickly. And that could have been something as simple as his mind wandering. He's out front, nobody around him. You know, it's crazy how fast you can go um, not being super focused at this top level. And so it could have just been something where you never know. You know, caught a little root, caught a little this. Maybe he was thinking about something else. He's one of those riders that is always uh, wondering what's going on behind him, calculating everything he talks about, calculating points in his head while he's racing. Jackson, here's that line you're talking about, and still doing it, still hopping over Started that ditch. Every lap. It's, and it's just those little, you know, fractions of a second or seconds here and there that add up that have allowed him to stretch that lead out. 34 seconds to the completion of lap number four. Now working on the completion of lap number five. We will see a white flag waving. What will the gap be whoa let's see the gap here jordan's jumping over that ditch as well looking solid through that section but it looked like jordan ashburn was able to get a little bit farther ahead of johnny gerard we'll be able to see in this camera shot yeah he there opened he up the gap a little bit and i don't know if you caught did you see jordan ashburn take a look over to the right there i think there he there. actually took well going the other way right as he jumped over you saw if you look back he took a quick look to the right i think he may have caught a glimpse of Stu baylor there and that is like blood in the water if you're jordan ashburn you're a shark and you want to track down that brain. He got a good look at 
both Stu Baylor and Johnny Girard there, so he knows what he has up against him. Lapped riders, man. This is so costly at this point in the race. Stu trying to do everything he can to stretch this gap out. These lapped riders racing in their own right. Looks like those two might even be racing over position. Hard to tell, but uh, Stu Baylor comes up, gives him a rev. They do get out of the way, let him through, but uh, maybe even some more valuable seconds cost there, and Stu Baylor trying to do everything he can to try to stretch it back out. I uh, don't know if uh, Adam got a split there, but we will be getting one when they come through at the finish line here in just another about mile of racing to the finish line from here. We keep talking about that little ditch jump they're doing right after mile eight. That's that's something that you learn with uh, play riding. Sometimes, sometimes going out there just riding for fun, messing with little things here and there, you can learn a lot more than just hammering out motos. You know, you got to play around with these little things. That way, you get comfortable with them, and when they uh, when things form during the race, you can just quickly jump to changing that line and, and doing something like that. That which seems seems simple, but will save energy and make up a lot of time. Bike skills, all of these guys have them in absolute buckets, but uh, they're on display here today with little things like that and the consistency that they're able to hit these lines and uh, keep these machines upright at a very, very high rate of speed. You see Stu Baylor taking a little hydration bottle from his crew there, not at full sprint pace through the uh, GBC tires pit stop area because he's making sure he gets that hose in his mouth so he can get some much needed hydration. The temperatures are up there today, so these guys definitely probably starting to uh, feel the effects of the heat and this long race already two minutes two hours and 15 minutes in here comes jordan ashburn and we're told 17 seconds was the gap when we saw them last on the camera shot there down from 34 at the beginning of this lap so basically the the gap has been halved meaning if jordan ashburn could do that again hypothetically he'd be right on Stu baylor's rear wheel this is shaping up to be a barn burner as we're reaching very close to the completion of lap number five and what will be a white flag wave no need to panic, though. We saw Stu just cruising down pro row, getting his nutrition, his water. You could tell he's riding very calm. He's obviously confident in his bike and what he's doing. And someone like Stu, you never know what can happen, especially on the lap, lap, last lap with all lappers. But someone like Stu, I'm sure he's confident with where he's at right now. See lappers very thick there for Jordan Ashburn as he's working his way through. As again, we pointed out, Jackson pointed out, has opened up the gap just a little bit over the 969. The Red Bull Racing Factory FMF KTM of Johnny Girard, our points leader, uh, has lost a little bit of ground to the second place ride of Jordan Ashburn. Here it is, folks. Final chicanes coming in. Ricky Towery will have a white flag waving. One more lap of racing action for Stu Baylor to try and get it done here for his first win of 2024, gaining some much needed points. Gonna see what is the gap. Little struggle there through that rut leaving, and Jordan Ashburn definitely got a look at Stu Baylor there. No question, you saw him take a look over, look right at Stu Baylor. Stu's lap there was about 20 seconds slower than his previous. And the gap. And talking about bike skills, did you see Jordan yeah. Ashburn making his way around that lap rider? Uh, Jordan Ashburn, 12 seconds behind Stu now, going into the last lap. So look wow. at that, folks. You want to talk about time starting to add up. 34 seconds, down to 23, Johnny down to another, 17. Johnny, another 12 behind Jordan. Down to 12, 12 seconds back. Jordan Ashburn virtually in the same section of racetrack. If that continues that direction, Jordan Ashburn will be on the rear wheel of Stu Baylor very soon here. Jordan Ashburn, a man on a mission. Home State boy trying to get it done for the Home State fans, and he's chipping away at the lead right now. The stage is set here for this when the white flag flies with less than 30 seconds between our top three riders. We are still waiting on our fourth and fifth place riders. Last we knew that was Craig DeLong and Mike Wachowski. They have not checked in yet, but all of your podium positions, Stu Baylor Jr. leading the way, 12 seconds back to Jordan Ashburn, another 12 back to Johnny Girard, and now it is Craig DeLong and still the shadow of Mike Wachowski. Mike Wachowski can't say enough about this guy. Surprised Mikey Waynes isn't coming in here and trying to wrestle the microphone away from us to talk about his home state Hoosier. Mike Wachowski running inside the top five for the first time ever, or what could be a first ever finish he has run inside the top five but if he brings this one to the finish line it would be his first ever top five finish in the xc1 class yeah he's only two seconds there behind craig uh craig's about 50 seconds behind johnny g so they're kind of the second pack of riders um off the leaders kind of settled into there but craig craig cannot rest like we see mike wikowski right on him 
Um, strong ride for both of those guys. And then a big gap back. Still no other riders checked in. Sixth, seventh. Oh, Stu got a big old stick sticking out. Did you catch that? Big stick it. sticking up out of the radiator there. Uh, come up past his arm. Uh, picked that up somewhere in that last section. Didn't look too concerned with it, though. He was still charging. But Jordan this guy, aggressive. that's a yes. full charge right there. And Jordan has definitely picked up the pace here on this white flag lap. The crowd's behind him. He needs to go, go for glory. You can hear in the camera shots them cheering for him as we see Johnny Girard making his way around. Yeah, it looks like he doesn't even have goggles on. So, hey, it could be that heat, you know. Luckily, they have some wind out there. But out here in Tennessee, the weather is hot. And late in the race now, it's, it's taking a toll on these riders, I'm sure. Definitely the hottest race we've saw all season this season. Oh, a little mistake. And that is not the floating we have been talking about as we watch Stu make his way through the rocks. I think we're going to see, look at this. You can see Very the crew close. members really charging to the edge of the track to cheer him on, tell him, you got to go, he's right there. But at this point, Jordan Ashburn knows it. He doesn't need a pit board. He can see Stu Baylor right there in front of him. Ten seconds is what we're told the gap is. And then it's the 969 of John Girard. Still very much in this fight, but starting to lose a little more ground with each camera shot. It's another bike length, another bike length. Right now, Jordan Ashburn just putting down a charge with intensity that no one else here in the top three is able to match. It's amazing to see these riders go through this rock section. It's hard to get an idea of how rough these courses are until you start seeing other riders go through it and you realize just how fast and easy these pro riders make it look. Yeah, luckily the suspension on all these bikes is so well. And, you know, sometimes the faster you go, the better the suspension works. So these guys seem to float over the top of the rocks where uh, the amateurs that are a little bit slower kind of fall into the holes and get kicked around. This one is shaping up to be a barn burner, and there is the barn here at the Old Gray. Stu Baylor leading the way, but he now has heavy pressure from behind from Jordan Ashburn. Ah, Jordan Ashburn will be in pursuit of Stu Baylor, working his way back through the field and up to the rear wheel of Stu Baylor. Uh, we'll have all that action more when we come back to Racer TV Live. Unleash aggression, reliability, and premium quality with Kenda Tires. Delivering exceptional performance on all types of vehicles. Automotive, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, bicycles, trailers, lawn and garden, and even golf. Trust Kenda Tires to guide you on your next adventure. Kenda, designed for your journey. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Comedic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Comedic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best inside their engine. Comedic Gaskets are always constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environments. Whether it's a championship on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts alike depend on Comedic. Comedic Gasket, sealing championships since 1989. takes commitment, passion, and endurance to make something great. Made by champions for 
Attention. On Track School is an online private school catering to some of the top athletes in the world. We offer a flexible schedule for students that are chasing their dreams and always on the go. We are an accredited K-12 school where students can graduate with a diploma. Scan the QR code or call us to book an appointment with one of our learning coaches to discuss your students' next steps. Welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. White flag is out. Stu Baylor is in control as Jordan Ashburn, the home state man, in tow, trying to uh, keep up with him. And uh, boy, did we have some absolute entertainment this weekend. We had live shows on Friday night. We had live shows on Saturday night here at the Old Gray. And of course, last night it was uh, Cherokee Hope opening up and uh, Chad Hancock playing after them. And then Ty Gregory closing it out, putting on an absolute show for the GNCC fans and locals alike. Not a bad deal. Pay for a race ticket for the weekend. You get some live concerts as well. That's what GNCC racing is all about right there. Always uh, kind of that added element of fun when we get to have some live concerts out here. A little bird's eye view. And then uh, how about it for Landers KTM having their uh, official grand opening. And uh, Chris Landers, we talked to him a little bit. He said, I think, had over 500 people in attendance for that. Ryan Anderson working the cash register over there. And how about that? Ryan Dungey. I thought for sure he'd be lined up today. Come on. Get Ryan Dungey in Sportsman A, maybe? I'm sure he had to race his way to Foxborough for Supercross. <laughs> right. But, hey, maybe one of these days we'll get him out <laughs> there on a KTM 300 or something. Hey, Ben, you were there with the, with the boys, Johnny Gerard. Man, what was it like? Yeah, it was cool. Really impressive facility. Good to see a lot of people out there. And um, cool to see the Landers, I guess, factory effort race shop, as well as the dealer's race shop, kind of all in one. It's um, it's impressive. Yeah, very, very cool facility. We welcome into the booth Triple J from Scott. Man, you've been in and out with us several times this year. We're finally making it work. You said, oh, I'll stay as long as you want. But, man, uh, welcome. You have taken GNCC by storm. You love it. You found almost like a new home with us here, man. Yeah, it's been awesome, man. It's, there's nothing like the GNCC fa family. And I know we say that every round or every event, but it really is like that drone footage just showed, right? Like, how many places can you go where you get a concert Friday night, Saturday night? You know, it just, uh, it's a whole community from the start to finish. You pull in Thursday or Friday and, you know, your whole fit. You're with these guys for three days. Yeah. And it's just a whole community and there's really nothing like it, man. It's, it's a really cool experience. Well, I know uh, from talking to folks at race, uh, they're stoked that you're here as well. Having Scott here on location with us uh, makes a huge difference. And uh, every time I go over to talk to you, uh, shoot the breeze for a little bit. You have a line of people, man. It's been good. Yeah, we can't complain. You know, having, of course, Ben and uh, Johnny in the goggle really helps. You know, our local guy, Jordan Ashburn, is doing really well for us as well. So it's just, for us, we're taking the sport by storm, and it's been really good. It's it's one of those things where you, you hope and pray, right, that you make an impact on the sport. But really, this is just a blessing for us to be here and, and, and you know, help everybody out. And just really, I know it, it sounds cliche, but support the sport, right? Sure. So, no, that's um, absolutely true. It's cool because, like, a lot of people are, like, don't really know all the products that we make. So, like, you know, Ben or, or Johnny could point to this. Like, a lot of races this year, not this year for Ben, but in previous years, like, our sealed gasket tear offs, the perimeter seal yep. gaskets are amazing. Like, so a lot of times our guys don't even have to run roll offs because our tear offs are so good. So some of these guys are running 14, 21. It just depends on the conditions, but a lot of times we don't even need to run roll offs. So that's just a testament to our goggle of how good it is. Love that. We just saw Stu Baylor rolling through right there and sounds like a 34 second gap. Now back to Jordan Ashburn. So I think a little bit of a sense of urgent, or is it Johnny Gerard? Did I miss Ashburn in there? I couldn't tell. I didn't see him. Yeah. I, they, Ooh. Okay. 
Okay, so Holly, our spotter, Hollywood, sounds like uh, was able to spot Jordan Ashburn. We may have missed him on the camera shot right there. Uh, but, boy, Stu Baylor uh, hauling the mail here late once that first win of the season. We talked about it. Well, honestly, we've talked about it enough, the fact that through four rounds of racing, Stu Baylor still no wins under his belt today looking to change that. Yeah, this is a new venue, too, which is really cool. I know you guys have probably already talked about it, but it's cool to see, like, a new venue, maybe a new winner. Like, it's a, it's a great story. Yeah, it is. And, and what is a uh, old-school GNCC? Ben, he was preaching preaching the gospel about the Scott goggles and the, the, the tear-offs. Man, can you attest to that? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, if you can't see, you can't go fast. So sure. having the, a solid pair of goggles, like he, he brought up the, the gasket tear-offs, um, you know, roll-offs are awesome, but you want the biggest field of vision you can have. So something like tear-offs is, I think, what most riders uh, would go for. Watch. Especially on the East Coast, you know, you have uh, oh, yeah. we have a lot of humidity out here, so worrying about the goggles fogging makes a big difference. You know, you got the shadows, the sun, having the different options with different tinted lenses, it makes a big difference. So uh, Craig DeLong there battling, continuing that battle with Mike Bukowski, the 282. Right now we are watching from the Yamaha Racing Live Drone, Stu Baylor continuing to go to work, coursing his way around the lap traffic and trying to bring home what would be his first win of the season. And more importantly, for Stu Baylor's perspective, he gets those extra points for the win, and he chips away a little bit at that lead that uh, Johnny Girard has on him. And also a momentum swing in his yeah. favor, which is something Stu thrives off of. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a short break next week, too. We're kind of back to the normal That's schedule. That's true. So it's going to be cool to have that, have these guys close. Uh, you know, it's still Johnny. I think we'll still have a pretty good points lead. But overall, like like Ben just say, having that momentum and that confidence going into the next round. And I think Stu's pretty good at Ironman for the most part. So it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what, what happens at, uh, at the Hoosier GNCC. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. And uh, ne next weekend's Nashville Supercross. Yeah. Too, right? So this yeah. is a, you get to it's a fun week home, for me. Yeah. It's probably going to be a lot of golf, a lot of uh, short driving. You know, it's an hour for me to drive home today. So that's why I'm also here. It's like, why rush home? <laughs> yeah, no, we love that. Love that. So... Stu Baylor continuing to do his thing out front. No signs of Ashburn or Girard behind him. Again, our spotter, Hollywood, letting us know. Uh, I believe it was Ashburn still in that number two position. It was just up over a 30-second gap. Man, I don't know if anybody's going to have anything for Stu this late in the game. Like I talked about earlier, I'm sure Stu was biding his time and going to put in a charge on this last lap because I guess just something you learn over the years, especially Stu. He's very calculated. Um, like I said, he was riding very calm. Even though he had that little mistake, he wasn't concerned. And I'm sure he's hitting his marks now. He's laser focused, and he wants this win bad. Yeah, wants to win, needs to win, if nothing else, to get people like me and Johnny Gallagher to shut up about it so that he can show, hey, I've got the win. Um, you know what? He may even call us out the post-race interview, and I'm fine with that. Bring, yeah. bring it. We'll take the smoke, baby. We, we're here for it. I know, I know I'm coming in late, but, like, you know, maybe you guys already talked about this, but, like, for Ben, like, for you, like, if you were racing, it's a new venue, only nine miles. Like, how methodical are you guys with the track and, like, trying to figure out how many laps, when to pit, like, how much conversation goes into that for you guys? It all depends on the rider and the team, and you just have to hope that, you know, when you start the race and you're not sure if it's going to be a six- or seven-lap race, you just hope that your team writes it on the pit board and, and lets you know. I'm sure they did when he stopped to pit. They were probably yelling into his ear, letting him know. So yeah. at that point, he knew, you know, okay, one one pit race for me. He stopped after lap four. He got some, he got some water, some nutrition, some fresh goggles. He knew he only had two laps to go. And um, I'm, with that 30-second gap he had at that point, you know, he kind of, Still went fast that second to last lap, but I'm sure saved some energy, just flowed, was doing his own thing, and yeah. now here we are on the last lap halfway through. He stretched that, that lead back out from 12 to 34 pretty quickly, so we knew Stu had the speed today. He's, sure. he's been the fastest guy. With that last, yeah. he, you know, he had a bad start because of the crash in the third corner, and he worked his way right up to the front, quickly got to the oh, front. Ooh, oh, who's that? Well, spill right there like by Stu. Down. Oh, is that Stu? Yep. Right back up, right, right back, back up, up. right yeah. back moving. Yeah, things like that, they always happen, but hey, with GNCC, it's one of those things where things are going to go wrong, so it's just with how you how you manage those and, and how you overcome them. 
totally. No, that's cool. Like it's, like I said, and like what Mikey said, I'm new to, to this. This is only my, I'm going on my second year now of getting involved with GZC, and it's, it's cool to learn the sport, right? Like, you know, we, you know, Supercross, you know, motocross, and all that stuff. But GZC, there's so much that goes into it. And it's, it's been really exciting to learn everything and all the as, all the different aspects of the racing. Were you kind of stoked this weekend? Coming into it, that uh, wasn't a mutter. Uh, no, <laughs> Did that I mean, kind of change things up for you. Or was that bad for business? No, so like, I, it was weird. Like, I mean, uh, you know, I might big shout out to Tim Cotter. You know, you I don't know. It's one of those things where like he was very informative. Like, cause like for me, it's only an hour, so it's like, do I oh, drive? Sure. Do I not drive? So, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where I think for me at least, it was really good to have that information because yeah. it's like the road and this and that. You know, what I mean, there was a lot. There was a lot. It's a brand new venue, so. Sure. A huge shout out to the GNCC family, Tim. You know, trying to keep us updated and give us that. But overall, it was a it was a successful weekend. Nice. Like, good, everybody good. was stoked. You know, we got we brought out some new colors, and it's been yeah. I can't complain. It's it's awesome. an awesome venue and a, a great great weekend. So I feel like leading up to this race, all I saw on social media was Tim Cotter's face <laughs> talking right? about the park yeah. and talking about the rain, the mud. But hey, that you know, looking at the track now, conditions are perfect. They couldn't be any better. I said it before. You know, we need rain as as late as Friday sure. for the track to be good. So when there's rain leading up to the race it really shouldn't uh shouldn't deter you any yeah. of the fans anyone in the future yeah. anyone who stayed away this weekend you really missed out so yeah the team always does a good job and you know the rain is is something we should welcome to make That's the track yeah. the best it can be and i mean yeah to your point there i know we have some folks that are just out here to spectate what have you but yep. at the end of the day like you came to race so yeah. you know getting in here it might be a pain in the butt it may be miserable frustrating uh but boy if the track is good the racing is good that's what you paid to come here for right and like it's we've had a few rounds like that to where it's like thursday rain friday rain but then the, you know shout out to the atv guys they pack it in yes. for everybody and take the br brutal of it and then sunday it's awesome racing so it's uh, like i said before it's all a family everybody kind of works together and we've been fortunate to, enough to have some really good racing this year with with or without the ring that's true that's it Stu baylor out in front he is having a good day and it was kind of interesting you were talking about him being methodical zach heron was mentioning it earlier he spoke with him and uh, it was, hey, I want to hang with those guys for the first couple of laps. Third lap, I want to make my move. Well, it was shortly before that third lap. He made the move around Ashburn. And really, since then, it has been the 514 Stu Baylor show putting it on display right now. And that gap yeah. just increasing. How much time we got left before we get that checkered flag? About to hit enter there. We got our intern, Ben Kelly. We got uh, a little less than 10 minutes, about eight minutes before we should see checkers on this one for Stu, if he can hang on. Zach Heron, Jackson Burrell making their way down to the podium, getting under. What, so uh, before we let you go, Triple yeah. J, man, uh, we'll get Johnny Gallagher back in here. But uh, what's obviously Supercross next for you? Yep, yep. We have Supercross uh, East-West Shootout, which is going to be awesome. Yes. First one of the year, so that's, oh, that's going to be right. really exciting. Um, you know, every, like we saw Hayden get a win yesterday. We saw yep. Chance Hymas get a heat race win yesterday. So um, I think a lot of guys are confident right now. And I think the race is going to be really yeah. good. And I mean, and let's be honest, I don't want to get too much far. We're getting ready to close this sure. out. But Cooper, Webb, and Jet yes. tied. So yes. it's going to be exciting. But yeah. again, I don't want to get too much. No, you're good. Guys. But yes, you're good. that's what Supercross is next weekend. Yes, sir. That'll be good. When will we see you again at GNCC? Are you going up to the We'll Hoosier? be at Hoosier. Yep, Sweet. we'll be at Hoosier. So I think Johnny and I are going to try to get a quick couple nine in. And, Heck yeah. Uh, hopefully he doesn't beat me again. So. All right. I got I got to, you know, get him back. He's, I, he's I would go good. golfing with you because that's home for me. But you guys would be so frustrated watching me try to golf. It would be like watching me on a dirt bike or an ATV <laughs> race. OK, that's how bad it would be. That'd um, be me out here. Yeah. I mean, I talk about it. But I got to have Ben train me like I'm, a, I'm a, my summer bod's not in effect yet. So. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Um, Triple but, J, man. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us. You are always welcome in the booth. We'd love to get your perspective on it, man. Uh, a pleasure as always. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to the GNCC family for having us. And I really look forward to closing out the year and, and uh, having a great 2024 season. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That is Triple J. Scott Goggles out here on location with us here at the GNCCs as we continue to watch Stu Baylor. Just passed the seven mile there not long ago. Man. Looked cool, calm, collected. Didn't see, uh, didn't see Jordan or Johnny behind him, so still has, still has a good, comfortable gap.
Johnny, this is the ride um, we kind of expected to see out of Stu Baylor at least one of the first four rounds. Today, he really has kind of put it all together after what was not a great start, I believe, second to last into the woods. Uh, yeah, I think uh, actually by the time it was all said and done, you know, picking up the bike and everything, I think he was, was last. Okay. Uh, so it was, you know, all the way from the back, all the way to the front, and then opening up a gap. Obviously, we saw Jordan Ashburn put in a heck of a charge there, made a run, looked to make it very interesting there for a while. Again, still a few miles of racing left. We're not going to go ahead and hand any trophies over, but Stu Baylor really starting to look like he has this one in hand, under control, and just clicking off the mile markers for what will be, I'm sure, a very popular win for the uh, the rider we've been looking for all season to get it done, and finally today looking like that is going to be the case. He's going to cross the finish line first for checkered flag waving. It's the first win of 2024, and again, valuable points trying to race himself back closer to the points leader, Johnny Gerard. Uh, speaking of Johnny Gerard, as we, like I said, let's not count our chickens before they hatch, but nonetheless, Stu Baylor looks like he's going to go on to win this when we return to the Hoosier in a couple of weeks. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Johnny, first place where Johnny Gerard got his first career XC1 win. Uh, so yeah, let's let's just start stirring the pot there. So will it give it? Will we get this back and forth between these heavyweights as we watch DeLong continue to battle with Mike Wikowski? Will we continue to get this back and forth battle between uh, the heavyweights that is Gerard and Stu Baylor? I'm hoping. Sure, <laughs> and and I think there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, you talk about having a little bit of extra confidence coming into a round where you've done well previously. You know, Johnny Gerard has to have a special place in his heart for you know. Johnny Gerard grabbing his first overall win. I mean, that's huge. You know you're going to have a little bit of uh, extra steam coming in, a little bit extra confidence, just like this guy does right now, hopping across that ditch. We'll wait, and we'll see what the gap is back to Jordan Ashburn there. That is Stu Baylor all alone at the moment. No pressure from behind from the number three and starting to very quickly run out of racetrack. If Jordan Ashburn is going to make a move, he needs to do it now. We know that there is Ashburn. So, yeah, he's, he's a little bit closer than he was, but still still not quite within striking distance. Uh, looking like if, if that gap had, I think I heard at one point it was back to that 34 seconds. Yeah. Uh, they were talking about, well, it's definitely a lot less than that. But Stu Baylor only now just a few sections of racetrack remaining. So unless Jordan Ashburn can really pull out something spectacular here, he's just not close enough to make a move. Yeah, Ashburn pushing and Stu did go down, although wasn't very long, literally went down in the machine, got right back up and got going. Uh, but yeah, Stu's just, he's riding well. He's clicking it off. Yeah, this far into the lap, you know, probably about a mile and a half to go. Nothing crazy. Oh, oh Stu Baylor down, down. Again. This time a little more gnarly. Jordan Ashburn see. is going to be virtually on his rear wheel oh. by the time he gets going. That Jordan is Jordan Ashburn, Ashburn is right, right there. there. You want to talk about some drama, folks. We've got it. Stu Baylor has just gone down. Jordan Ashburn virtually to his rear wheel. Look and this is going to be a gunslinging shootout right to the finish line, folks. That's why you never give up someone like Jordan. Even if Stu didn't make that crash, Jordan charge into the line. Even if he doesn't catch Stu, you have so many benefits that you uh, gain from riding like that way. And now it's paying off. Let's see if he can get on his wheel. Oh, have man. Some excitement. This is, my heart rate is just yeah, spiking is. through the roof. <laughs> there is no question. Stu Baylor knows Jordan is there. Jordan can see Stu in front of him. And this is now no longer a matter of seconds. This is a matter of inches. Jordan Ashburn trying to get to the rear wheel of Stu Baylor, hoping maybe he has a line. Maybe he can get a little aggressive, put some elbow grease, try to run that coastal racing gas gas inside. But they are glued together, and this one is going to be a fight to the finish. Now Stu Baylor cannot afford to make another one of those mistakes going down on the machine is lap traffic going to play a factor Jordan Ashburn a new sense of urgency can he get it done in the home state right here let's see he needs to get right oh. on the rear wheel and try to show the front see if he can block the line oh. Stu getting sideways he clipped that he white, po white pole of the corner marker there I mean Stu is just all out and Jordan Ashburn is right there here we go, one-two battle between Ashburn and Stu Baylor. Baylor out in front leading the way. The hometown man, Jordan Ashburn, all over the rear wheel. Back into the woods. This Stu's jump. made some mistakes, have we seen? If Jordan can get right on his rear wheel and pressure him, pressure him, maybe he can pressure him into another just enough to squeak by and get the, get the win at his uh, local race. I can't help but think yesterday Bill Balance was talking about that you know how many wins the man has, and he said these are the kind of races you remember where you are battling back and forth. Taking different lines. 
This is what the fans paid the gate fee to come see, and they are being absolutely treated to a barn burner. This one is down to now the final chicanes. This is it. One more out and back, and there will be a checkered flag in the hands of Ricky Towery. Jordan Ashburn throwing everything at it, but so far, Stu Baylor has him covered. This is it, folks. The final chicanes coming down to the finish line. 5-1-4, Stu Baylor out in front. Jordan Ashburn behind him in the two spot. Oh, very big sense of urgency. Baylor absolutely pushing. There goes Ashburn past the fans. Coming into the finish line area, looking like it's going to be Stu Baylor. Can he hang on? Yes, he can. And for the first time this season, Stu Baylor with a P1 at the GNCC. And what a ride by Jordan Ashburn in the two spot. Boys, that one was fun to watch. I don't know. Congrats to both those guys. I mean, Stu Baylor maybe just wanted, you know, he is a showman. Maybe just wanted to make that one look interesting. But you got to wonder, hey, I don't think he wanted to make it look quite that Ooh. interesting. Uh, there's a... Uh, <laughs> There's a, a sign of respect between those guys, yeah. you know, the fist bump, the handshakes, and uh, Stu Baylor hitting the deck there right near the finish line, and you can see was kind of off the track, had his rear wheel in some rocks, couldn't quite going as fast as he would have liked, but man, gets it done and grabs the win. I loved what I saw right there at a Jordan Ashburn. I don't know if he's throwing the goggles or what. Maybe I didn't see it right, but it looked like a little bit of frustration out of Ashburn. Of, man, I let that one get away from me right here in the home state. That was mine to win. Nonetheless, I, honestly, nothing to hang your head about that was just an incredible ride by both men. Yeah, Jordan Ashburn leaving absolutely everything out there on the track, pushing it down to the final final few miles. And even sitting here in the booth, it seemed like, you know, ah, this one looks like it's over. One little mistake from Stu Baylor. And you pointed out, Ben Kelly, that's why you never leave anything on the table. You push it. you got to give yourself the opportunity to capitalize on any one mistake. And look at the gap they opened up over Johnny Girard. Still a good point stay for Girard, though. Ending up on the podium uh, will, you know, kind of minimize the loss to Stu Baylor. Uh, Jordan Ashburn obviously made up a few points as well, oh, but we'll definitely continue to uh, have the uh, leaders reverse plates and be the points leader leading into round six. But looks like he's really tired, maybe under the weather a little bit. He's head down immediately. Wonder what's going on there with Johnny Girard, but I'm sure he, one thing's for sure, it looks like he's glad this one is over. And this is really the first race we've had this year with this kind of heat. I don't even think we got this warm in Florida. As Girard going to take a seat, they're going to get him iced down. And he has a full schedule this year. He's doing, yes. doing the GNCCs, the National Enduros. Look at that. Stu Baylor pouring water on Johnny Girard. That's a, that's a friend right there. Make, hey, buddy, you're a little warm. I'm going to go ahead and help cool you down. But uh, these guys, in all joking aside, good buddies off the track. And uh, Johnny definitely looking like he gave it everything. And uh, coming up just a little bit short, but still a solid ride on the podium here today for the 969. Yep, sure. I'm sure he's telling him, hey, thanks for that third corner bump, but hey, I got yeah. the better at the end of the day. And Craig DeLong going to cross the line, I believe, in the number four spot. We did not see the 282 Mike Wachowski. I think that was actually his helmet right there. Think if so. that is the case, a big, big hats off. It is. Yep. The 282 Mike Wachowski with a career first, top five finish in uh, XC1. And, and Craig DeLong, uh, you know, the best finish he's had so far yes. in 2024. Our defending champion getting uh, back in the right direction with a solid fourth place ride here at the end inaugural old gray GNCC. Yeah, I got to think uh, if you're Craig DeLong, you got to feel good about today. Uh, things certainly have not gone his way in the first four rounds today. Uh, one, hey, you saw the checkered flag, you had a top five, and you held off a very hungry Mike Wachowski back there in the fifth place position. So great day for Craig, a move in the right direction for the defending champion. As we wait to get our interview set up with our top three against Stu Baylor taking the win, Ashburn second, and a man that is absolutely exhausted. Johnny Girard rounding out that box. And we'll definitely hope to see that battle for the XC2 win come down to the uh, the end here. When we last looked, it was, uh, Grant, it was Grant Davis, Davis with, well, was it two? Just about, it was like three seconds kind of behind, back to Josh Toth, and those should be the next two riders coming through the pack. And there you go. So hopefully we'll get to see that one cross the line. And sounds like we are ready with our winner from today with Stu Baylor. Man, guys, I am getting the post-race breakdown from the man himself, Stu Baylor. Uh, just like you dreamed it up, man. You said, I'm going to get with him on laps one and two. Maybe a little not the way you drew up the start, but you get back up there, you get in the fight, and then right about the time we get ready for lap three, you make the pass and make it happen. Take it to the race, man. Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, the little little mishap there in the in the second turn, and then uh, here, here at the end of the first lap, I went down actually again um, right there in the side of the scoring. And, 
lost another possession, and uh, after that, you know, I just I knew I just wanted to be there, be consistent, um, try to try to drop the hammer on lap three and make the pass that we needed to do, and that's what we did. Uh, that was kind of the plan before, and um, I knew I could throw down one heater and control the race from there. So. From there, just tried to uh, try to make sure that I didn't make mistakes. And man, it was weird. The slower I went, the more mistakes I made. So um, had to pick up the pace there. The last lap, I flamed the bike out a half mile from the finish, and I had 10, 12 seconds on Jordan, and it, he was right on me. I mean, it was it was a dog fight there there to the end. And you know, when the blood's in the water, it's uh, it's easy to follow. And I was waiting for him to pull the inside on one of these corners. Luckily, it was pretty one lined out there. So. Uh, but good, good racing, part of it. A couple mistakes, but man, it's uh, it's good to be back in the center. Absolutely, man. We're glad to see you get a win here in 2024. You're always talking about the old school GNCC, brand new location out here for the old gray. Seem to be jiving with you, man. What'd you think of this new spot? Man, it's awesome. You know, they, I, I think uh, year one they, they got some stuff to learn on the parking. I, I know people are complaining about it, but man, it's a hell of a venue. Let's uh, let's hope they keep it on the schedule and and stop the bitching, man. Let's go racing. This is one of the cool ones. This is one of the good ones. It's uh, it's demanding. It's real. It's real real racing. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, it was a blast, man. I love it. The the concerts, you know, it's my whole vibe. I, I talk about it. I like to have fun. I love racing. I love to love racing, and uh, that's me. So, you know, it, it, as far as that goes, I I hope we keep racing here, keep having the concerts, keep having fun. But shout out to the whole Rocky Mountain uh, Red Bear Racing Team, Browns RV, Monster Energy, uh, Team Green, uh, Brown uh, SOS Medical. Man, it, it's uh, it's funny. I'm going right to see this guy after the race. I think I, I think I broke my toe there out there. <laughs> On lap three so um, but there's so many people behind us our, our mechanics the whole team all the guys out in the woods man uh, every race we're getting better and, and hopefully we can uh, hopefully we can continue to push and check out uh, check out the new racer X man we got a we got a hell of a spread there and, and the new dirt bike mag man it's super cool to uh, see the love from the industry and what we're doing there it is guys look at the smile on Stu Baylor broke toe or not he is your XC1 winner Stu Baylor gets the job done from old gray Sue likes racing <laughs> he likes racing, he likes, he likes racing. winning, Live and he's a happy guy right now. Yeah, uh, Stu makes a good point right there. Ben and I and, uh, and Triple J, we talked about that a little bit, too. Of You know what? Hey, if you came here to race, you got exactly what you came for, an incredible race, an incredible race track. And uh, sounds like Jackson Burrell stands by with our second-place finisher, the home state man, Jordan Ashburn. Yeah, guys, thanks. I'm down here with Jordan Ashburn, our second place here today. Jordan, you were right there in the fight all day, leading some of the race, and you smelt blood in the water right there at the end, man. Take us through today. Yeah, you know, uh, man, it's a good day. Uh, home down track, I had a lot of pressure on me. Everybody, you know, wants to see a win, and uh, I put out the most best I could today. I felt like I, I rode really good. Uh, Kind of had a little little flaw in the middle, but uh, yeah, we kind of regrouped and put down a hard charge there toward the end. And uh, man, my bike was amazing. And uh, hats off to everybody, all the fans out here, like just ripping me the last lap. It got me going and uh, kind of reeled them in at the end and just couldn't make it happen. But uh, man, I'm, I'm happy with the day and happy to be on the box. Jordan, you spoke about the fans out here, man. Even on the TV, we could hear how many people were cheering for you out there. You got a lot of friends and family here. How does it feel? Man, it's amazing. And watching and uh, man, I thank the Lord for keeping me safe today. And uh, it was a it's a fantastic day here at uh, here in Tennessee. Jordan, it sure was fun watching it. How do you feel going into the next round? Uh good, man. I'm hungry. Uh, you know, last round we had a had a rough go, and uh, feel like we rebounded today. And uh, I can win races, and uh, I'm here to here to show that. All right, guys, that's your second place, Jordan Ashburn. All right, there you go. Jordan Ashburn, second place today in a home state race. We did see our leaders, top three in that XC2 class, have checked in. It is Grant Davis getting the win, getting it done today with a 39-second advantage over Josh Toth in the number two spot. And then it was Liam Draper rounding out the top three in the podium, 42 seconds. Uh, about, wait, is that correct? Liam Draper? No, two minutes and six oh, seconds yep, there back. Two six, like. 42 seconds back. Thad Duvall in the number four spot. So Grant Davis getting it done. He will take the points lead in that XC2 class. And uh, a great ride for him today. We'll wait and see where Angus uh, reared and checks in, how many points he can gain. He was last back in that 17th place overall position, uh, back in about seventh or eighth place in that XC2 class, who was your points leader coming into today. Yeah, sounds like Jackson Burrell now standing by with Johnny Girard. Yeah, guys, I'm here with our third place, Johnny Girard. Johnny, you obviously left it all out on the track today. Take us through your race. Yeah, man, I, I don't know. I got a stomach bug yesterday, I think, and uh, I got sick this morning pedaling the track, and I knew it was going to be a long day, so I gave it hell, and uh, yeah, 
landed on the podium, so I'm happy. It's a, that's a win for today, so it's all good. No doubt a hard-fought race for you. You're right there as far as the points are concerned. Still the points leader going into the next round. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel good. I'm, I'm excited to, you know, rest up and get better and come out at the next one. All right, guys, that's Johnny Girard, your third place. That's one of those rare opportunities where you feel bad yes, asking a man yeah. questions after a race. He obviously a consummate professional answering the questions, but he just wants to go sit down, say yep. he thinks he got a stomach bug. I mean, to ride, to put that much effort out, to still get on the podium today shows how invested he is in this 2024 GNCC championship. And they say you win championships on your bad days. When you start getting sick while you're pedaling the track in the morning and you come away with a podium position, yep. that is a very solid performance. That's a good day. That also speaks to just, uh, I'll go ahead and say it, how bad ass you guys are that run a uh, pro class well any class at a gncc two hours on an atv three hours on a dirt bike those 180 heart rates uh for three hours sustained i think back uh to a race in florida where all you guys looked lethargic after the race you're absolutely exhausted i felt like jackson down there terrible to put a mic in your face that was a true testament to what gncc is all about right there with johnny gerard really laying it all out And, oh, it sounds like XC2. It may, may have went back to the rig. Maybe they're they're tuckered out Did, as well. Didn't get those guys. Also, our top two top amateurs have checked in. Normally don't get these guys, but they were so on it today. They are in the top ten overall. Ninth place overall, Jason Tino out of Phillipsburg, New Jersey, winning that 250A class. And, again, ninth place overall. Would have put him on the podium in the XC2 class. Uh, and then also Nick DeFeo coming in there with six laps complete. Now second place coming across in the 12th place overall position position ahead of your fourth place finisher in XC2. So those guys on the pipe, on the charge here today. Absolutely impressive ride by those boys. And uh, looks like the young whippersnappers can can hang in the old school GNCC. Yeah, they, they had it. Uh, they had it unlocked today. They were pushing the pace. But what a race it was, guys. Taking a look at our specialized race recap. Carnage from the start. Rough start for Grant Baylor. Rough start for Stu Baylor. A couple of guys coming together right there and Jordan Ashburn the home state man with that early lead in this one boy great start for Craig DeLong too and honestly overall a good day for him yeah you know fourth place finish a big step in the right direction for him hate to see this yep. Lennon Snodgrass you know as you pointed out Mike he really starting to get his season uh, going in the right direction looking like he had a mechanical we saw him in the pits and unfortunately out of the race early today as the race wore on, we still got a heavy dose of Jordan Ashburn absolutely pushing. Pit strategy coming into play for these guys as well. Ends up paying off well for Stu Baylor. And, uh, boy, once he got that lead, never really looked back from it. Getting coursing his way around the lap traffic. Lappers not really playing as big a factor as I kind of expected, but nonetheless still a factor. There he is into the GBC Power Sports Tires pit stop. A little rehydration for Stu and very little rehydration right there. <laughs> Didn't quite get that handoff, <laughs> but uh, he wanted to go. He knew he had some pursuers coming after him. Jordan Ashburn and Johnny Girard hot on his heels. But at this point in the race, he had, had built up a pretty manageable gap. Next thing you know, like he says, kind of messes up in the rut here, gives back a couple seconds. What was 34 seconds, we saw it whittle its way down to 17, or 23, then 17, then 12. You can see the urgency getting to him. A few mistakes here and there, and this guy right behind him, Jordan Ashburn on the charge, closing the gap, fueled on by the home state fan going after trying to get that top spot and we would have uh, I think one more mistake by Stu going down on the machine right there and that one a little longer and that was enough for Jordan Ashburn to get him back in the crosshairs but uh, boy both guys finding another gear turning it on late and Stu Baylor just refusing that's, to relinquish that's, that's, that lead that's Stu Baylor's last crash oh there right it is there. Yeah. yeah okay this is where Jordan comes into the picture yeah, that was that was the one he said he flamed out. And then from there, we see Man, a clip of white gnarly. pull corner marker. That could have been it right there. But Stu Baylor able to hang on all of the pressure. Jordan Ashburn with the outside lines throwing everything at it. The fans running from one side of the banners to the other to see this. The checkered flag waving and Stu Baylor with his first win of 2024 here at the Old Gray. A lot of camaraderie, a lot of respect between these guys. And they absolutely brought it down to the wire. That was, uh, that was a wild one, one for the record books right there. As we take a look at our top ten from today, as you heard Johnny talking about, we got some of our amateur riders in the mix. Baylor, Ashburn, Girard, your top three. Great day for Craig DeLong finishing just off the box. 
and Mike Wachowski, I believe, first top five in the XC1. Grant Davis, great day for him, as well as Josh Toth out there. Davis just having a sensational ride here today. Top five riders all on different brand, but good brand point. bikes, too. Good point. Oh, it feels good to be in here with uh, with with Johnny and Ben. I was in the middle, and it was Zach, and I, I was like, you know, like tiny. I was a little person. Uh, hey, that's going to wrap things up for us, but we got to get some final thoughts. I'm going to throw it to Ben first, man. What was your big takeaway from today? Yeah, it was just... Um, my biggest takeaway is probably that I was jealous that I wasn't out there. <laughs> All right. It looks like fair. some good conditions, good track. But, no, it's cool. Awesome racing. You know, Stu got his first win of the year, and he played the race perfectly. Jordan Ashburn fought the whole time, never gave up, and gave us some excitement there at the end. And Johnny G, you know, pushing through some, some stomach bugs, some issues yep. uh, through our race is, is not easy when you're feeling good. So to do it when you're not is uh, pretty impressive, and he's, you know, still got a good, good uh, points lead and doing what he needs to do. Johnny? Uh, I, I think I'm going to have to say Stu Baylor getting the yep. win. You know, that's a big momentum for him building. Uh, we knew he was going to be a championship contender coming into 2024, and uh, he proved today that is exactly the fact. Of, in a phenomenal ride, uh, working his way from the back, getting up into the mix and getting it done. But uh, hats off to Jordan Ashford. Yep. He sure made it yes. interesting. And to echo what Ben said, I mean, Johnny Girard, championships won on your bad day. He's your championship points leader, and he puts it on the box, you know, with a stomach bug and getting sick pedal in the track. So, and, and we have ourselves a championship race now. I mean, Johnny Girard was flirting with having a full race lead on everybody. Not the case anymore. Not Stu Baylor back points. in the mix. Stu Baylor made up nine points today. We're in. We will be back in a couple of weeks up in Indiana. Back home in Indiana for me, at least. The Hoosier GNCC, uh, April 27th and 28th. And then Powerline Park will return to that facility. A lot of you guys remember that one. Uh, and then, of course, we've got those highlight episodes coming out on uh, Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to check those out on uh, racertv.com. Search for it on YouTube. All the things. Things. On behalf of Jackson Burrell, Zach Heron, Johnny Gallagher, Ben Kelly, Triple J, I'm throwing him in there. He got in there from Scott with us. Our camera operators, JC, Matt, Josh, Mike, Leah, Kirsten, and Jack, the drone pilot, Gabe Scholl, our manager, Dan Reinhardt, our spotter, Hollywood, our engineer in charge, Jordan McFadden, our director, Don Hampton, producer, Adam Gordon, and our executive producer, Miss Terry Joe Russell. I'm Mikey Waynes. We'll see you at the races.